dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye. shall know the truth and the truth that you know shall set you free sanctify them by thy truth thy word is true join, join apostle joshua selman of eternity network, network international as he shares with you liberating truth from god's word it's intimacy it's partnership it's fellowship this is koinonia Blessed be the name of the Lord. Worship Him from everlasting to everlasting. Thou art God. God in the midst of His people. Mighty. We hail you, Most High. We hail.
full of Oh the son of man that thou visitest him Thou hast made him a little lower than Elohim And crowned him with glory There is no one There is no one same power that conquered the grave lives in me. Help me worship us. Lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth. Your love that rescued the earth. of creation. 
revelation waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Saints of God pray, prophesy. The same power by the Holy Ghost. The same life. Same ability. Same strength. Same wisdom. Same energy. Same power. Same power. Same power. Hallelujah. 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 Aren't you glad that we're not ordinary people? We may talk like the men in the system. We may breathe in and out. But we don't have the same life, brothers and sisters. There is a divine life. Jesus transferred a divine life said in John chapter 10 verse 10 he said the thief cometh not but to steal to kill and to destroy but I am come not to give you a religion not to make you Christians I am come that ye may have life so we a quality of life that has not been known a life that is superior to this realm John chapter 3 verse 31 says he that cometh from above whoever possesses this divine life is practically literally above all hallelujah so tonight we're going to sing one more song crying that the lord will open the gates and the doors of revelation without his spirit we are only noise makers here hallelujah it's only by his spirit hallelujah never forget in your life in your ministry in your business in your endeavor that outside of the spirit of God you have no existence hallelujah open up the gates open up the door it's a very simple song Open up the gate. Hallelujah. Just hold on. I want to teach you the song for those of you who don't know. You hear the worshipers sing it once and then we'll follow. Hallelujah. It's a very simple song, prophetic song. It says, Open up the gates, the gates of revelation, gates of insight in the spirit. Open up the gates Open up the doors Now just hear the worshippers sing it once and then we'll Open join in concert the Open up the gate Open up the gate Open up the door Open up the door It's a pretty song Simple song Powerful Open song, sing. Contains deep revelation that cannot be exhausted in this realm. There are gates and doors wherein archives and mysteries of the spirit are hidden.
we confess that we are helpless without you we declare our inability to help ourselves Lord we are confident that by your spirit you will communicate deep things into our hearts Lord our hearts are open tonight bless our hearts In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless you. Walk up to ten people. Tell them it's good to see your face again. there is fullness of joy and at his right hand pleasures forevermore hallelujah the Bible says and ye shall know the truth hallelujah and he said the truth that you know will make you it will make you free hallelujah and we thank God for his grace is building us equipping us by the power of his spirit like my brother rightly said this is a training ground where God is building and equipping sons and daughters, those who will be the custodians of the next revival of the Spirit. If you believe that, say amen. amen. So thank you, Lord Jesus. Appreciate the worshipers. Great people. Acts chapter 4, verse 16. Oh, let's start from verse 15 and when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council they conferred among themselves 16 saying what shall we do to this man it's a question for that indeed a notable miracle had been done by them and is manifest to all those who dwell in Jerusalem the last phrase and we cannot deny it what shall we do to this man for that indeed a notable miracle a notable miracle had been done by them and is manifest to all those who are in jerusalem and we cannot deny it look up tonight God is going to be challenging us very briefly hallelujah on the need to stand out as beacons of light and begin to manifest the kingdom the life the power the glory the audacity and the grace that flows from the kingdom that we represent hallelujah hallelujah now this was an interesting story because it was an event that followed the healing of the man at the beautiful gate hallelujah when he was healed by Peter and John it stirred up controversy in Jerusalem and when he got into the temple the scribes and the Pharisees suddenly saw the man he was sitting in an obvious position the Bible tells us that he had a spot at the beautiful gate and every time people pass to pray they would drop arms hallelujah and at a certain time during the hour of prayer the bible says peter and john went to pray and seeing this man he was begging for arms and peter said look on us the bible says he looked at them steadfastly expecting to receive something and he said silver and gold have i not but such as i have give unto you in the name of jesus of nazareth rise up and walk 
Hallelujah. And then the Bible says, Peter reached out and grabbed him and he leaping stood. And he ran into the temple, jumping and leaping and rejoicing. And there was so much controversy and on account of this, they had to hold a meeting. Hallelujah. Because the apostles were now becoming obvious threats to their environment. Hallelujah. And the scribes and the Pharisees felt threatened by the presence of certain people. Although they were not educated as it were, they were not learned people. Hallelujah. And they had to call them over to the Jerusalem Council, the Council of Religious People. Isn't it amazing that when Jesus walked upon the earth, he never had problem with sinners and unbelievers? His problem was with religious people. Hallelujah. And when the saints, the first fruit of the finished work of Christ, walked upon the earth they didn't have a problem with demons and devils hallelujah their major problem was among religious people it's amazing how religion can resist the things that the holy spirit is doing they were men and women full of human understanding but had no comprehension of the precepts of the spirit for you to be a scribe and a pharisee you had to know the five books of moses the torah the Pentateuch, you had to know it off hard. And Moses in that prophesied and says, A prophet shall God send to you. Was prophetically speaking about Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And when Jesus walked upon the earth, although they had that in their head, they still persecuted him until they killed him. That's why Jesus speaking in John 6 verse 63 said, The flesh profited nothing. He said, It's the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profited nothing. He said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And Paul extending that statement said, the natural man understandeth not the things of the spirit. He said, for they are spiritually designed. You don't use your five senses to understand the things of the spirit because it gets to a plane where every revelation you are encountering will wrestle every sense of logic that you have so you must be able to ascend the heel of the lord whether or not your mind understands that's why we call it faith hallelujah that our life and our walk in this realm is absolutely hinged on the integrity of the one we are following and not necessarily on our degree of comprehension on what he's doing hallelujah and so he said a notable miracle i'm going to speak very briefly on what i titled notable manifestation of sons notable manifestation of sons we've spoken a lot about the manifestation of sons hallelujah romans chapter 8 from verse 18 says for i reckon that the sufferings of this present time it's not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Then verse 19 says, For the earnest expectation of creation awaits the manifestation of the sons of God. Hallelujah. And the next verse says, For the whole creation was subject to vanity, not willingly, but by him who subjected the same in hope, talking about Adam the first man, handing over the rightful keys of dominion to Satan. Hallelujah. And so the earth groans and travails waiting for the manifestation of sins. I need you to understand that all through Bible history the only way that men give glory to God is when the deeds of God is seen and expressed in the eyes of men. Are you listening to me? When no matter how supernatural a thing is if it ends in the secret God cannot be glorified are you listening to me because for God to be glorified men must be the ones to give him glory are you following me and therefore they must see and understand the goodness and the deeds of God and then as a response to what they see they will give him glory and give him praise and so when I talk about notable the word notable connotes being obvious being significant 
being outstanding worthy of note the bible makes us to understand in acts chapter 4 verse 16 the apostles had been doing um great things while jesus was around the bible records that when he sent the 70 hallelujah that they went and came back and said even the demons are subject to us through thy name so it was not exactly their first time of experiencing the manifestation of the power of god however the bible says this was a different one and what made it different it wasn't because the miracle was new it was because it was notable say after me notable it was notable done before everyone undeniable irrefutable beyond argument hallelujah a notable miracle and when the scribes and the pharisees gathered themselves together because they said through which name did you cast this out and peter began to preach a sermon and they brought themselves together they said brothers and sisters oh, well no sisters they're brothers praise god for ladies how come there were no ladies when they were conspiring to do all these bad things ladies that should be a thumbs up so are we agreeing that men are the cause of come on remember eve <laughs> hallelujah remember jezebel remember the mystery babylon was not a man was a woman upon the horse can i continue okay remember the mother of jesus <laughs> hallelujah okay that aside let's continue the bible says that a notable miracle although they they didn't believe god they didn't love the things of god there was no human way they would prove that this was not so hallelujah no table manifestations of songs the bible makes us to understand that special miracles he called them special miracles they were not regular miracles special miracles were wrought through the hands of paul such that handkerchiefs and aprons were brought together the bible says just leaving his body devils demons were casted out special miracles the manifestation of songs will not create the kind of ripple effect that the kingdom desires until everything about our lives become notable the secret of expressing glory to god through our life is that everything about our lives will be reckoned to be notable the bible tells us that many men live long however there was a man that caught the attention in the bible hallelujah what was his name bible students sorry some people are saying mel mel what hallelujah who is the oldest man in the bible come on how old expo praise god now several people lived long but how come we don't preach about the other people that live long something was notable about the longevity of methuselah the bible tells us that there were many wise men i mean the spirit of wisdom and creativity in exodus 31 rested upon bezalel but the bible tells us that there was something notable about the wisdom of solomon it was so notable that queen sheba had to come from the east to reckon with the fact that there was something notable about this man and the bible says when she came and saw the splendor of the palace and the manifestation of the artistry the creativity and the wisdom of the spirit the bible testifies that there was no more breath in her and she said half of this was not told me notable manifestations of songs hallelujah notable there were many men who were men of faith in the bible how come every time we talk about 
an icon of faith will suddenly move to the father Abraham notable manifestations the Bible says that a notable miracle happened and as a result because it was notable if it was just a miracle they would try to deny it but they said a notable miracle everybody saw this man crippled and then one moment they saw him standing they couldn't deny it they couldn't say it was stage managed for he had been there a long time the notable manifestation of the sons will begin to silence the systems of the world you know why God is allowing them to see all the evil and chaos because when the sons manifest it will be notable traceable impact that they can see and know that at a time t there was darkness and chaos why do you think the bible tells us that there was darkness and then god said let there be light that that statement would have been skipped away in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth and god said let there be light it would still make sense why did god have to contrast the darkness the chaos and the light is god's desire that we not only manifest as sons of light but enter a realm called notable manifestation undeniable manifestation unarguable manifestation of sons hallelujah when jesus walked upon the earth the scribes and the pharisees had been teaching you must understand they were learned people humanly speaking they were absolutely intelligent but for the first time they had a man preach and his context and expression was notable and the people took note they said who is this from whence comes this man who is this notable grace and the bible says he taught as one with authority and not as the scribes there was something notable in his life when he began to move there was something about his love it was notable hallelujah and when he climbed upon the mountain the bible says about five thousand people aside women and children followed him why because his manifestation was notable I needed to understand that John had manifestations hallelujah but there was something notable say after me notable obvious something conspicuous something um, undeniable and the unbelievers testified they said we cannot deny it we cannot deny it this is too notable there's no way we are going to try to cook up a story to stop God from receiving glory is notable God intends that your life becomes a notable sign and a notable wonder such that no matter what angle people come they will say this life is too notable we cannot but deny the hand of God we cannot but deny the favor of God there were many people who worked in the ministry of helps and hospitality but the Bible tells us there was a woman called Dorcas notable hallelujah to the point that when Dorcas died all the women were making reference they said no she had done see it wasn't just ordinary the way other people were doing she was a giver notable until we begin to move in notable realms of manifestations the world will find intelligent human ways the bible makes us understand that when jesus died they put certain people the military people to protect him hallelujah and if they suddenly came and saw the grave empty they would argue it and so god needed to do something notable the bible says on that resurrection morning 
I mean, Jesus had the ability to walk through and they would not see him. At least Peter did it. Peter walked out of the prison. Jesus would have kindly gone out of the grave. But if, he, if Jesus just went out of the grave, people would still argue it. Are you listening to me? It had to be notable. The moment a thing is notable, it cannot be denied. Notable. Hallelujah. Notable. I cannot look at this guy and say he's a lady no matter what scientific evidences I bring this guy is a man because it is what? notable there are notable features that attest to the fact that this is a man I cannot see this and call it a, assuming this is not a bible and call it a living thing this is a book hallelujah this cannot be a human being no matter what biological experiment I do, I cannot prove that this is a human being. Now, listen. We live in a world where almost everything can be proven with science. Hallelujah. People are trying to prove whether walking on the Red Sea was genuine. And their scientists and physicists are trying to conjure certain things. The world is trying to disprove the fact that Jesus is Lord hallelujah and right now there's the argument over transformation in lives and whether or not people are really healed when someone says he's healed they say just forget don't tell us that lie the end of all argument is a notable manifestation a notable manifestation hallelujah if the people had never seen the man at the gate beautiful they would conjure theories hallelujah and said the apostles went and cooked this up but everyone saw him they knew him they knew his parents are you following me his parents were known and then when this man got up it was a notable manifestation although they tried to argue they couldn't do much why because it was undeniable when you move in the realm of notable manifestations even satan will stop arguing about the fact that jesus is lord over your life satan gave a testimony about job hallelujah one of the few if not the only places in scripture where satan gave a testimony about a man Satan gave a testimony that he could not break through the hedge of protection that was around you. Notable testimony. Then the Bible says, you are a city. Said you are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be what? A notable city. You cannot be hidden. He said, let your light so shine I want it to be noticed I want it to be notable because when men see it and you let them know that I'm the author then I will be glorified that's why there are few cases in the Bible where Jesus healed the sick and did supernatural things in the hidden there are few times did you know ironically right now we have more miracles in the church than outside the church but do you know when you study scripture there were more miracles outside than in the church. Hallelujah. Notable manifestations of songs. The Bible makes us understand that creation is waiting for the sons to begin to do undeniable things. There are certain people that when you talk about them in the world system, people can argue and say, forget is this guy a real man of God? Just forget what they are doing. However, there are certain people that have stepped into a realm called notable manifestations. That unbelievers, believers alike, no one understand that there is the hand of God upon their lives. We celebrate many evangelists in the world. However, there is a man called evangelist Billy Graham. Notable Kabo Satabaya. There was something about his life 
Hallelujah. And as a result, whether the president of America is a Freemason or not, he would come to pay homage to this man called Billy Graham. There are many evangelists that have blessed the nations and especially Nigeria. But we have one called Evangelist Reinhard Bonke. His name is almost like Coca-Cola. When you call the name, people say, ah, I know Reinhard Bonke. No table manifestations. There's no denomination. It doesn't matter what they believe or what they don't believe that will resist the presence of Reinhard Bonke. No table manifestations. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? It's not enough to begin to manifest the life, the kingdom, the power. But we must step into a realm of undeniable manifestations. That when you're exhibiting the character of the spirit, it must be notable. Notable. If you are a giver, that you step into the realm of notable giving. Notable giving. That your name will be synonymous. Every time I call your name, what is notable about your life? Hallelujah. Bin Laden did a notable manifestation. Although he was evil, but it was a notable manifestation. You will never read the history of terrorism without mentioning his name. He earned himself that title. Notable manifestation. Hallelujah. A woman in church history called Mother Teresa. How many of you have read about her? Was she the only woman who loved people? Don't you love people? But there was something notable. Are you listening to me? Notable. Notable about her life. There were many apostles. Isn't it interesting how the Bible did not give detailed account of all of them? I wonder why. Because on the day of Pentecost, the Bible never said Peter received the Holy Ghost two days before the rest. How come some people did not make it the archives of their lives? I mean, the Bible dedicated two-thirds of his writing in the New Testament to just one man. I think that's not fair enough. Room would have been given one one chapter for everybody to encourage diversity. How be it, there was a notable manifestation of an apostle. Hallelujah. And tonight I've come to tell us that the world will stop denying the hand of God upon our lives when we step into no 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 when we before you say amen let me finish it when this is the condition when we step into that dimension of the notable manifestation of souls hallelujah there is no man by the grace of God almighty who will pass around here and deny the fact that kings and priests there is a gathering of eagles to the glory of God there's no man who will deny that Jesus is Lord in this place it's to the glory of God I say it with all humility that every time you step there is something notable we must get to that dimension where there is something notable in our lives are you listening to me notable That your love life will become notable that every time they want to give an example of one who passionately loves the kingdom hallelujah they'll say Aaron do you know Aaron is an example notable if it is not notable then you will never be able to make impact and bring glory to the father hear me herein is our father glorified when we bear much fruit. Hallelujah. Sharing is our Father glorified. 
that when you become a notable mother such that it's not just your children who will attest to the fact that there's something about your life did you know that there are some families that the children prefer their neighbor's mother to be their mother or their neighbor's father because there's something notable there are some families that whenever you are free you want to go and relax there notable the life and the hand of God is notable there are certain people you want to be with the moment you have any spare time no matter how it inconveniences you you want to be around them there is something notable about their lives the question the Lord is asking tonight is what is notable about your life what is notable for the kingdom Many of us have a little of power here, a little of passion for God here, a little of zeal, a little of grace, a little of um, the giving life, a little, a little. But this Bible, I need you to know that there were many people who were featured in this Bible. But some were featured once and for all. Others were featured repeatedly in the Old Testament and they were featured in the part two of the Bible. They couldn't be denied. Abraham, Elijah, sorry, and Enoch. Elijah and who? Moses, I'm sorry. They had finished their course in the Old Testament. What brought them to the transfiguration again? notable manifestations such that God used Moses to typify the law and he used Elijah to typify the prophets when God was showing me dimensions of his call upon my life one time I had a vision and God used two notable men of God to reveal to me the patterns that I would walk in and for years it bothered me I said Lord why did you use these people how many of you have had dreams where god used someone's face to teach you something when god is talking about love then you see why was it not your face hallelujah no table manifestations of songs the lord wants us to step into that dimension where we begin to move in notable dimensions of the miraculous notable dimensions i cried and i prayed i told god yesterday you know while i was just praying in the night expressing my heart to the lord and i told him i said lord take me to that dimension of notable a notable life where everything about my life becomes an object of conversation to the glory of the Lord hallelujah that people look and say why why does he talk this way why is it that um, every time he speaks there seems to be something notable there are many people that sing on stage I, I always say it can sing on stage and raise a song and as you are going back your song dies with you there the people who are clapping cannot even remember what you sang hallelujah and then someone else will come on stage and sing the exact same song and that song will linger in your spirit for days and weeks every time the holy spirit wants you to worship that's the song even if you don't know everything about the song it could be a phrase it will remain in your spirit and every time you sing you see the face of the one who sang notable there are certain meetings that when you enter you get blessed and you go out but there are certain meetings when you enter you see that the presence of God in that atmosphere is notable notable hallelujah that when you sit there is the consciousness that the glory of God is in this place there is a consciousness that God in the midst of his people is mighty how many of you have taken an unbeliever for a program and 
this is someone that is a noise maker and will not be patient and he said i'll sit down for five minutes and he sits down and after 10 minutes you see a sense of reverence and a contemplation within his an intrapersonal contemplation something notable is happening to him hallelujah the bible makes us to understand that on the day of pentecost something notable happened that was not the first time they were celebrating pentecost are you following me now 50 days after the ascension of jesus something notable happened and it attracted everyone to come and the bible says that they saw men filled with the holy ghost and were speaking and when peter spoke there was something notable about his speech and as a result 3,000 people 3,000 people came to the Lord hear me it's time for everything about our lives to become notable are you listening to me it's time for what everything about our lives to become notable that every time you stand and you minister the word there is something notable an identity that validates that Christ is at work in your life come Steve please play this guitar notable there are many people that play the guitar there are many people that play all of these instruments what is it about the man we call Steve Strings. It's not because he sings unusual songs necessarily. Go ahead and play Steve. No table. There is something. I know a lot of people, professional people that play guitar. But there is something notable. Hallelujah. And every time you hear him, whether you like what is playing or not you cannot deny that this comes from a realm that is not of the earth there are certain people that when they speak their wisdom is notable the bible calls certain people wise men from the east there were many men from the east but their wisdom was notable Hallelujah. There's got to be something notable about your life for the kingdom. Hallelujah. Tonight we are going to rise above that average and that ordinary life. We are going to rise above that limitation of nominal Christianity. It's time for your Christianity to be notable. Not just notable in church. It's time for people to begin to argue and discuss about your passion for God. It's time for people to begin to discuss the grace of God upon your life. The workings of the Spirit. That every time they are talking about intimacy with the Holy Spirit. They tell them, can you see how I covet Shea's dimension of intimacy. There's something notable about her intimacy. I've had the opportunity of counseling and talking with a number of people about the ministry of the Holy Spirit in their lives. And there are about three or four of them that have attained a realm I call notable intimacy. Hallelujah. That at the end of speaking with them, I had to go back to God and cry and say, God, what, what, what did these people do that brought you into that depth of intimacy? Hallelujah. A notable life that every time people see you, your life becomes a motivation because there is something notable. Every time they are talking about an example of a true servant of God can your name be called for notable kingdom stewardship every time they are talking about men and women 
who demonstrate um, what it means to be prosperous and yet godly can your name come in the midst of that notable discussion Acts chapter 4 verse 16 it says a notable miracle has been performed and we cannot deny it I look forward to the time when in and through my life we will keep our generation stand still and say do you have any other argument as to why you think Jesus will not be Lord on this earth where we will dismiss all the facts and figures and all the things that people use to deny the fact that Jesus is Lord I look forward to a time when a sorcerer and a diviner is doing whatever he has to do and then you step into that place unknowingly and the jazz stops working notable cabo satire without speaking in tongues and making noise let me tell you the world is tired of our noise what they need is the notable manifestation of sons and so we can preach and sweat on stage and they cross their legs but the moment they see something notable they will arise and say what is this notable for as long as you love like unbelievers love Christ cannot be glorified because it doesn't make any difference when your love becomes notable then it will compel men to know that there is an ability at work in you that is not human for as long as your wisdom is regular and natural I look forward to a time when the government will run to the church and say we we are confused we don't know where to go politically economically and the church will say oh yes we know let it be as it were in the days of Daniel that when there was confusion and chaos in Babylon because the king forgot his dream and the king forgot he didn't even know the interpretation all the sorcerers and diviners failed and the Bible says that there was need for a man who had the spirit of God in a notable fashion and Daniel stepped out the king said I will kill all of you and Daniel said there's, there's no cause for alarm just give me one night I will bring a notable result and he got up in the morning and says oh king let me tell you your dream and he began to astonish him and he said I testify that the spirit of the gods I testify the spirit of the gods is upon him the Bible says when they were tested he was found ten times better Ten times better was a testimony that the hand of God was upon his life the Bible talks about a man called Job he said Job was the greatest man in the East they were prosperous people the East was known for prosperity and wisdom how be it it was notable We must begin to make notable impact notable impact in our community when the church builds a borehole in a community and builds a school let me tell you something the government will have no option but to involve the church in the decision making of that environment the reason why we pray in tongues and shout and the world is not moved by our tongues and our revelation is because it is not yet notable hallelujah that every time you go to greet your auntie or your uncle they receive you with such warm reception because they have marked it that every time you greet them a door is open 
so there's something notable about your life the moment you say i am coming they get very excited do you know that there are some people you long for them to visit you there are some people you long for them to come and say hello because there is something notable about their lives we are going to be raising a cry i cried out my life yesterday i said lord a notable life my generation must know that a son an ambassador of the kingdom has stepped his feet upon this environment for the glory of the king for the glory of the king notable that your excellence becomes notable that your wisdom becomes notable that your life becomes notable that the grace of god upon your life becomes undeniable such that although you are not the firstborn in the family they will never make a decision without inquiring of you somehow they know that your impute is relevant not just because you are prosperous but because the hand the spirit of the lord is upon you hallelujah that in your department and in your faculty they will note you for certain things when it comes to the affairs of wisdom they know that the wisdom of god resides upon a citizen when the king of syria sent naaman with a letter and the king of israel was was disturbed elisha now elisha said oh king why are you worried he said send the man to me and let him know that there is a prophet in israel send him let him know that god has ambassadors who are still alive and are still doing well i look forward to the time when things are not going on in your room and your house and you step in and say lord prove that an ambassador lives in this room prove that an ambassador lives in this place where your life and every activity around your life becomes notable when they make you a faculty president or a departmental president or a pastor or a minister that there will be something about your dispensation that will enter the archives of history that when so 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 and so 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 person was here there was something notable how many of us desire that kind of life if you truly want to bring glory to the king then you must desire the notable manifestations of sons notable let me give you a testimony to the glory of god some years ago they brought a lady from congo who had some demonic things around her life very very terrible hallelujah and when that lady came she was supposed to come and see me i used to sit down near the sunday school building and i just sat there i was just meditating and as soon as this lady stepped close she wouldn't move further again and the people said let's go they said i'm not going and then at a point they forced her and the moment she stepped in just where i was seated she just started shouting she said god is in this place god is in this place god is in this place and that's how she fell under the power of god and i tell you the truth instantly i sat down i was sitting there and i said satan go notable manifestation of sons there are many of us that need to look at our parents and say i speak to you enough is enough notable and suddenly things begin to change around their lives and they look at you and say what is it about your life and then you let them know that he is lord and i live to bring him glory until your life is notable the king cannot be glorified through your life are you listening to me there's got to be something notable whenever people are in trouble that they can run to you because you have been noted for certain things whenever people need solutions 
they can run to you because you have been notable and the bible says it shall come to pass that the mountain of the lord will be exalted to a notable point and he said all nations shall flow to it because it will become a house of prayer it will become a house of solutions it will become a house of breakthrough a house of increase and that's what god is doing by his spirit in koinonia making this house a notable place notable for signs and wonders notable for impact and transformation notable for the manifestation of the law of the character of the spirit notable for the grace and the hand of god notable for raising giants and champions and great men notable for communicating the mind and the counsel of the spirit for every season and i call you tonight to join in this quest of having a notable life enough of the ordinary life enough of the life that people can argue and argue about and say we are not even sure whether he loves god or not let me tell you when people are arguing whether or not you are a christian your life is not yet notable hallelujah when people look and say femi sorry we are arguing are you really filled with the holy ghost just settle this for us don't answer that question go back and lock yourself and say lord my life must be notable there are many people who try to replace this notable grace by wearing suits and speaking good english none of this will cover for the notable hand of god for your life i mustn't wear nice suit and speak with color and say okay i'm here bless you in the name of the lord jesus um i can bless your life invite me to preach well in your church the hand of god upon your life ought to be undeniable are you listening to me the bible says when jesus was born there was a notable star there were many stars but there was one notable star and the bible says on account of that star people began to flood into that place because a star was lifted and it was directly above that house that the lord will make your life like a star that people will flood and come and say what is it about the grace of god upon your life what is it about the hand of god what wisdom is this what knowledge is this hear me if you don't convert this thing that i'm preaching you will live an ordinary life and you will end up being frustrated the secret of impact that will bring glory to god especially in this generation of westernization and controversy there are so many options we need a notable manifestation of sons a notable manifestation of sons that when we are talking about givers the world will not dare say that they are on the top of the list in showing welfare and hospitality that the church will arise whenever there is disaster before the government finish their meeting who have sons of the kingdom who are empowered to step in and help the nations the notable hand of god upon our lives we look forward to times when when doctors conclude about people the church is already working in that dimension right now there are several sicknesses that even the hospital cannot diagnose and they tell them look i don't know what to tell you try god that's the only thing i know just try it's my desire that every one of us step into this notable lifestyle a notable lifestyle noted by believers and by unbelievers that the community in zaria the community in abu the community in Kaduna State, the community in Nigeria, will know that He reigns through your life. You know, every time we sing that song, Lord, You reign forever. 
when we get to the place that says you reign you reign you reign you reign one night i was singing that song and when i finished singing suddenly my spirit i had a voice saying you reign so i twisted the song a little then when i sing you reign after a while i switch it i say i reign i reign i reign because you reign i reign i reign i reign because you reign the scripture that john Fa shared he said the lord stands in the congregation of the mighty and begins they are not the congregation of the small god calls you mighty it's a meeting of mighty men and god is saying mighty men how come you have not delivered the poor and oppressed why are things going on as though you are not alive archbishop benson idahosa a man who lived a notable lifestyle during the popular Benin witch festival you will never talk about the history of revival in Nigeria without talking about the Benin witch festival and the impact of Archbishop Benson Idahosa all the witches were going to come from the world and gather in Benin for a conference and Idahosa said not when I'm alive not when i'm in benin it will not hold notable audacity and the media challenged him he said it will not hold and a few days or about a day to the meeting they had to call a press conference of the chief of the witches this is recorded on video the chief of the witches and archbishop benson idahosa and they sat down and the media people interviewed them they said all kinds of things and when the presenter was about rounding up it also said wait don't round up i have something to say and he turned and looked at the man and said before the whole country answer now are you a witch be careful as you give this answer because you may fall down and die now are you a witch answer the country And the man kept quiet for a while. This was a king of the witches here in Nigeria, from India, Asia, all over. And Idahosa said, I'm listening. Guess what the man said? No. Idahosa said, You can close the program. An ambassador, alive and active. What a notable life. He was told that at a point he was traveling and armed, rob armed robbers blocked them. Hey, come out, lie down. And he told, he was surprised. The driver was afraid. He, told, he, he said, park. He told the driver, park. And he came out and dressed his clothes. And the armed robbers were lie down, lie down. And he looked at them. He said, three things must happen to you now. You are going to choose either to be paralyzed, to die, or to be blind. But what must happen to you right now? Now listen. I'm not just saying this. The Bible says follow them who through faith and patience. What kind of life is that? Hallelujah. It was said of Bishop Oedeko that armed robbers came and kidnapped his daughter. And they were running out. And he said if I am a servant of God they will not cross my gate. As soon as they got to the gate, something happened. They started arguing with one another and they brought back the child. Do you believe this? Let me share with you a testimony to the glory of God. I've shared the testimony. We're lying down peacefully in our house. When a thief came and entered. And when he entered, he went to uh, the table where we keep our laptops. And he carried my laptop and when he carried it before you know my brothers got up you know tried to pursue the guy the guy ran opened the door and ran away and 
it was in the middle of that chaos I woke up and I said what's happening and he said the thief had gone away with my laptop and I looked and there was no laptop and I got up I said well Lord two things will happen the laptop will come back or you give me money to buy a new one in any case you are Lord hallelujah and then suddenly I saw a vision of an angel and he just did this with his hands and I didn't say anything hear me friends God is my witness they are here to testify seven hours later that laptop was back on the table we didn't raise any alarm the people in this in the in our neighborhood took it upon themselves and they pursued that armed robber and went to his house he hid it under the carpet in their house they brought it out this was the case i was counseling people in school when they called me and said please come they had to go and bring his brother in um, where, um the military cantonment what do we call it basawa and he came wanting to come and just plead with me and the guy packed his things and ran out of zaria a time will come when somebody wants to harm you he will reconsider and say is he worth it is the is he worth it the word of god says touch not my anointed do my prophets no harm when you begin to say ah witches are disturbing me devils are this and that will you press into god to a notable dimension where the demons and devils will reconsider and say is he worth it or are we trying to frustrate ourselves for nothing that you become so excellent and blameless that your that your lecturer will have no basis of implicating you the bible says they look for an occasion to implicate daniel and they didn't find anyone rise up on your feet it's a communion service so we we'll have to pray so that we'll quickly take the communion go ahead and bless the lord notable manifestations of sons Go ahead and begin to bless the name of the Lord. Go ahead and bless his name. And say, Lord, no table manifestations, no table from today by the hand of God, the grace of God upon my life is no table no table no table no table the wisdom of god upon my life is becoming notable go ahead and pray my world life is notable my understanding my insight to the word is notable your prosperity upon my life is notable. The goodness of God upon my life becoming notable. Over the works of my hands, notable. Go ahead and pray. Pray for your ministry. Pray for your life. Pray for your fellowship. Pray for your business. For your group. Notable.
of the gift of the spirit in a pool of life. Not a man. The wisdom of God. Not a man. God is a supernatural. Not a man. Your impact. Your influence. Your intelligence. Not a man. Not able by your lecturers, not able by your colleagues, not able by your co-workers, not able by your brothers and sisters, that believers and all believers alike will attest to the Father that you are not able, undeniable, not able. Hallelujah. When our lives become notable, then the world will reckon with the fact that God is at work in our lives. When our lives when our passion for God, when our zeal for His house, when our giving, when our, the manifestations of His grace, His power, His wisdom, when it becomes obvious, undeniable, then there will be no argument again. Foolish to argue with notable results. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Now tonight is a communion service. And we are going to be taking the communion. Now, I want you to take the communion with understanding and revelation. And I'll be reading two scriptures very quickly. John. John chapter 6. Brothers and sisters, I'd like you to cherish what God is doing in our midst. He's truly making us kings and priests unto our God. Hallelujah. Verse 35, John 6, 35. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life, and he that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Hallelujah. Verse 53, just jump quickly to verse 53. And Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have what? No life in you. It's not talking about the biological life. The manifestation of the divine life that will make you notable. Notable. He who eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood had eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed. And my blood is drink indeed. 56. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth with me and I in him hallelujah Jesus is saying for every time you partake of the communion you reenact you re the revelation of your oneness are you listening to me every time you take the communion you realize that you is in the realm of the spirit there is a renewal of the fact that you are one with Christ and that you are a possessor of the God life. A life that is beyond sickness. A life that is beyond failure. A life that is beyond weakness. Are you listening to me? The divine life. Above and beyond the limitations of the flesh. Very quickly, let me show you something in 2 Corinthians. I understand for many of you who have observed... You will notice that there has been an escalation of the death of fathers how many of you have taken note of that people's fathers just dying and the rate at which people are falling ill and falling sick 
but the bible says there is a bomb in gilead i want to show you a spiritual mystery tonight turn with me sorry first corinthians first corinthians 11 how that the communion is a spiritual principle that is an antidote to sickness an antidote to weakness and an antidote to the plague of death hallelujah verse 23 for i have received of the lord that which i also i delivered unto you that the lord jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said take eat this is did he say this is bread he said this is my body which is broken for you broken for your sickness broken for your weakness broken for your limitation are you following me now he said do this in remembrance of me after the same manner also the cup and when he had stopped saying this is the cup of the new testament in my blood these do as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me hallelujah follow me to verse 28 but let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh judgment to himself not discerning the lord's body verse 30 for this cause stop for not taking the communion with the understanding and the revelation of what it is empowered to do there are three things that happen for this cause many are number one weak many are number two sick and many sleep so when the communion is taken with understanding and revelation it gives you supernatural strength as ordinary as this looks humanly this is just bread and cake or, or drink or whatever but that there is a revelation in the spirit that this is what the bible calls the bomb in gilead that when there is a plague of, a plague of weakness a plague of sickness the miss the lord's body that his body was broken in exchange for your strength in exchange for your weakness in exchange so taking that reenacts in the realm of the spirit the blessing of strength the blessing of health the blessing of longevity are you following me now and so we are taking this communion tonight with the understanding that there will be a supernatural impartation of strength spiritual strength mental strength and physical strength and we are taking this that by the revelation of Jesus Christ his body broken for us that no sickness listen to me no devil no demon will survive your body as you take off this communion and lastly that with this communion we end the plague of death over our lives and our families listen you need to believe this there is many people suffer because we do not understand the principles that god has put to address certain issues there's no point arguing over what god has said the mystery of the communion hallelujah the worshipers will lead us will quickly do this as we share please if you don't get just be patient i hope the cops go around i invite the ministers please as many just come we have one two three four five six seven eight nine seven twelve we need at least 12 people please hallelujah at least 12 people praise god father in the name of jesus i pray over this communion this is ordinary drink and bread but we declare that the impartation of the holy ghost comes upon it in the name of jesus 
that as we take this communion tonight it becomes a supernatural antidote against weakness we banish weakness even that by the mystery of the holy communion in the name of the lord jesus we banish sickness from our camp we banish sickness from the body in the name of the lord jesus and father every covenant of death upon everyone's life and over our families as we take the communion an end comes to it let the plague stop in the name of the lord jesus Amen. therefore we bless this communion and we call it anointed in the name of jesus servants of god you can just pick it and walk around we may have some station some people should service those outside please do that quickly don't take it yet just take the cup and the bread hallelujah please let's have more people yeah, Pastor, you can have this. Let's have some people go outside. Please do it. Make it snappy. Just make sure you have the, the bread and the cup. And begin to pray. Pray full. Yes, Pastor Shell. What is happening in this place? Please let's make it snappy. Beka bara kata bara dabosha. Manto soto kaga dabala dabasha. Beke tala dabasha. Manto soto beke tala dabasha. Beke tala dabasha. Beka tala dabasha. Beke tala dabasha. Just pick the cup and the bread. We love Jesus. That's what we call. You are born in the midst of the freedom of the Savior. Not much of the cup. Just put your hands so that that's what we call. Let's do it very quickly, very quickly. Let the ministers help out. Just ensure you have the bread and the cup inside, outside. Hallelujah. In one minute, I'd like you to pray and express your heart. What you're trusting that the Lord caused this to do in your life. This is not just a religious ritual. In one minute, I'd like this communion to make sense to you. the welfare let's have more looks like there are still people more as many who have even if you don't have you can get the bread let's let's save time if you 
not gotten the call, please just leave hands. Alright, please locate them and let everyone have it. There's more of the cup here. We're taking the bread, just pick a piece and pass it around very quickly. Let's do it quickly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of us have not gotten the cup or the bread? Hallelujah. Please, can we make this snappy? Let's do it really fast. Just keep your hands lifted. Please locate them and, and the ministers turn so that you can. The Bible says that Jesus said if you eat. Please, um, Shade. There are people here. Is it the cup or the, the bread? Okay. Please, the bread. Just pick a piece and pass it around very quickly. Pass it around very quickly. Father, we declare in the name of the Lord Jesus that this is a sacred spiritual exercise. We are taking this to end the plague of death, to end the plague of weakness, to end the plague of sickness. You said we should do this in remembrance of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now together we are going to take the bread and the cup. Even, even if we've taken it and you've not gotten it, um, you can take that later on. Who has the bread? I see that they are not. Okay, please. Jimmy has one there. Please, I need everybody to have it. Let's do it quickly. Tumors will die. Growth will go. Demonic oppressions will leave. plague of death will end who has the bread I'm not sure the ministers have the bread please have this do we all have this please let me have the remaining so you can pick one for yourselves that's all right Just... okay here's the bread do we have any who doesn't have okay. everybody You've taken your own. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now look up please. This is ordinary bread. Hallelujah. And this is ordinary wine or juice or zobo or whatever it is. How be it? I need you in one moment to cease looking at this as just bread and a cup. There is a spiritual mystery. Are you listening to me? Jesus said, if you eat this, it's my flesh. And if you take this, it's my blood. That for every time you do this, you enact a mystery. An inexplainable mystery in the realm of the spirit. That dispels weakness, dispels sickness, and dispels death. 
and after tonight's communion we will say oh death where is your sting oh grave where is your strength enough of dying around it's happening all over the country enough of sickness and weakness lord we believe father anoint this even as we take it we bless it in the name of the father of the son and of the holy spirit together now let's take it go ahead and begin to pray in the spirit please pass the cups round go ahead and begin to pray in the spirit Say the mystery of the body and the cup. Leba kaparada baseketeba. Go ahead and challenge weakness, challenge sickness, challenge death. In the name of Jesus, we are obedient to the ordinances of God. Challenge every unfaithfulness over your life over your family members no more death no more loss no more weakness every pain challenge it in the name of Jesus for when our obedience is complete God is committed to perform when your obedience is complete Cancers die in the name of Jesus. Tumors die in the name of Jesus. Cyprus be gone. Demonic oppression be gone. Every mental problem by the power of the communion. Oh, death, where is thy sting? We banish the hand of death. Banish the plague of death. We receive strength, strength, energy, vitality, longevity. Though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we fear no evil. For thou was with us, thy rod and thy staff, thou preparest a table. For us, in the presence of our enemies, you anoint our heads in oil and our cup of our soul. Surely goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our life. Health, wealth, longevity, longevity. Hallelujah. Declare, I shall not die, but leave to declare. Go ahead and declare, I refuse it. So kataba, don't take it for granted. Don't take what you are doing for granted. We are operating under instruction. Don't take it for granted. We refuse to mourn any dead. Let the plague of death be taken far from the camp. For there are ambassadors. The plague of death. The plague of accidents. The plague of robbery. The plague of war. We decree it. We are preserved. According to John 5. In family, we are preserved. Preserved from the spotted dogs of men. We come from above. We understand the principles by which our kingdom operates. And we enact that principle. Let it be registered in the realm of the spirit. More than conquerors. We live long. We live strong. We live happy. We live healthy. Graceful. Favor. Peaceful. Making it back. We fear no evil. We are immune against robbers. Immune against wicked men. Immune against sickness. Immune against demonic oppression. There's freedom by the 
salvation. For when our obedience is complete, then God watches over his work to perform it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a practice that you can go on with. Don't idolize it. That's the trouble with people. When we begin to do things like this, we idolize it. It must be administered within the context of the world. want the anointing in the spirit there is a pathway that leads to the anointing if you want increase in ministry there is a pathway if you want to walk in financial prosperity there is a pathway the problem with our generation is that we have we are so intellectual and scientific we guess our way around the things that only the word of god can give us information about jesus said i am the way not a way hallelujah the Bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. Scientifically, intellectually, it says, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So one of the things that staying under the presence of God does for a Christian is that it helps you to cut away all these options you have and guides you to the path, that path of righteousness, right? Where you begin to live out in accordance you are no longer a rebel to the principles of the kingdom then you come at peace with creation and everything begins to um, compel on common consistent results in your life praise the lord so we spoke about divine patterns and um, we rounded off last week discussing three great errors remember three great errors that have crippled the body of christ and um, has fought God's agenda of seeing the church coming to that point the Bible calls the unity of faith error number one is apostasy a deviation from the patterns of God a deviation from the truth and I told you that there are two dimensions of apostasy the vessel communicating that apostasy that deviation that error can be false and of the devil never of God in the first place or the individual can be of God, but his doctrine is not of God. Are we together now? The Bible talked about a man in the Bible called Demas. Demas was once in the faith, but he fell out of the faith and began to communicate things that were not of God. Balaam, the Bible warns in the book of Revelation of the doctrine of Balaam. Balaam was a true prophet, right? But then there was a progression. It was first an error of Balaam. Then it was a way of Balaam. Then it was a doctrine of Balaam. It started as a mistake. Then it became a pathway to guide others to follow. And then it became a doctrine. The Bible talks about the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which I hate. All of these are fabrications from the pit of hell. Many of them, uh, they were initiated by sincere people with sincere desires, but because they guessed their own pathway. See, the danger when sincerity mixes with error, it becomes apostasy. Because you have passion, but your pathway is wrong. Are we together? So someone wants to see breakthrough in their family. Sincere heart. Then they go to a herbalist. A wrong pathway. And then it produces a deviation from God's pattern with severe consequences. So the first error is the error of apostasy. There are many doctrines being taught in church. Many of them have been older than every one of us here. But the foundation of those doctrines are from the pit of hell. The Bible says, doctrines of demons. Doctrines of demons. People have gone for prayer and fasting, gone to several places, and not navigating the pathway of the spirit properly. They have accessed strange ideas from spirits 
that a thing is supernatural does not mean it's of God. Supernatural just means outside of the three-dimensional realm. There are spheres that influence us beyond the scope of the three-dimensional realm. And chances are that anything you see that is superhuman, you suddenly call it godly. It may be divine in that it is of a force that is greater than that of humans. It is supernatural being that is outside of the scope of man's reason. But that does not mean it is of God. The apostle said there is as it were many voices and none of them is without effect. So that you are having encounters that are extra physical or beyond the physical realm does not mean these encounters are of God. Apostasy. Number two, indifference. That was the second error we considered. How that there are people in the body of Christ whose scope of passion is not kingdom. The scope of their passion is not um, is not holistic. Once an error in the body of Christ does not affect their immediate environment, they are not concerned. Are we together now? Is 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 the error of indifference? So they are so conscious of their ego, they do not have the courage to confront certain things that have the capacity to destroy the body for as long as it has not affected them in person they are the kinds who will give an a, a testimony like praise the lord i was coming in a car with 30 people and there was an accident but only because i hold papa's viral every other person died only me the god of a and b and c and people clap about it not minding that other believers died which has impeded the capacity for kingdom acceleration so the the scope of their pursuit of god is biased self-centered once a thing does not affect them directly that was the attitude of esther when she got to the throne as against that of mordecai mordecai was a gatekeeper with a passion for the salvation of israel are we together now and god took esther hadassah to the throne the purpose was so that she would be a source of influence to rebuke that which haman was plotting against the nation of israel but when she got there she became carried away by the bounties of royalty and then haman was there plotting the destruction of the nation of israel and mordecai sent her a message and for a while she would not pay attention and this is what mordecai said don't you think number one they don't even know you are a jew hanging in that palace because when they know they will hang you and kill you in a shameful way a woman gave chance for you to come here called vashti and now god brought you there and you have lost that kingdom view of your purpose of being in the palace so because you are now enjoying the royalties of the palace you do not care if your people die listen if you want to become an effective christian an effective minister your scope must expand beyond the horizon of your ministry and koinonia to think kingdom you must sustain an ability to receive the burden of the corporate church and not just your individual sphere now for the purpose of organization and loyalty you'll be loyal to whatever god has committed the ministry whatever it is he has given you however your concern must transcend your personal comfort into seeing that the body of christ is making progress no matter how koinonia is advancing as a ministry if the body of christ in zaria if the body of christ in the north is not making progress if the body of christ in nigeria is not making progress we are not making the kind of kingdom impact god desires are we together as a ministry we may be doing well this is the reason why we travel from region to region spending our lives stretching ourselves we're doing well as a ministry but how about the body of christ that they too may know him so we go to other regions and inconvenience ourselves to make sure that we open them up to the perspectives of God that has been communicated to us and contribute our quota to strengthening the body of Christ within that territory. Hallelujah. Are we together now? And this is one of the, the, the proofs of a true apostolic ministry. The scope of the impact of an apostolic ministry is beyond 
the platform that is committed to them they they oversee the spiritual progress of a territory not just a ministry hallelujah so if there is a spirit that the devil is bringing over our territory to cause the church to be lukewarm or to begin to cause a particular trait and a manifestation of darkness it is the role of the apostolic and the prophetic ministry to see beyond even if it has not affected koinonia yet we see it and stay it far off and keep the environment conducive for the advancement of the kingdom to take place indifference there are so many people who will never come out you ask them um, what is your position on tithing for instance and um, because they are in the presence of somebody who does not believe in tithing they will not want to spoil that relationship by saying tithing is of God but then they, they have their convictions but to be outspoken about the truth they do not want it because they are afraid of losing members are we together they are afraid of losing all kinds of things a man comes to sow one billion into your ministry and you know it's drug money but then because you need the money you would compromise on that chance to show how addicted you are to the precepts of the kingdom are we together now and you collect the drug money and not have the courage to confront him and say no 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 we need money in this ministry but this is we are not this desperate it must be according to the patterns of god and then the last error that has destroyed the body of christ is exaggerated confrontation of apostasy you see the balance now so the first error is apostasy a deviation from the truth the second error is indifference we don't know where you are standing neither here nor there men with no convictions they are not outspoken about anything they are confident about and then number three are those who are cynical and they hate the body of christ they have contributed to causing more pain in the body than victory exaggerated confrontation they are already people who are sadist they have a negative perception about the body are we together now and so anything that happens in the body they interpret it from the lens of jealousy and envy so even when they are communicating what is supposed to be true the foundation upon which that communication is predicated upon is wrong self-centered and biased so for instance if they are trying to say something like um we caught maman with a charm as a man of god we caught him in the meeting i saw him rubbing one powder quickly they take on that case study because they have a bias for the supernatural by default are we together now it's just that they do not have enough fact and figures to convince people to leave the supernatural so when they lay hold on something they capitalize on that one exceptional case and it becomes the foundation of their proposing what is supposed to be a corrective measure but it's a communication of error are we together someone can watch what just happened here now this manifestation of the anointing and be uncomfortable with it are we together now and then go to a church where he sees a man of god holding somebody's head and turning the head around and use that singular case to mean anytime you are ministering to people under the anointing is an error no sir you see true correction must come from a standpoint of love anything outside of the scope of love is jealousy is bitter envy are we together so those who help in deviating the body of christ from the precepts of god those who are indifferent about it because of their self-centeredness and then those who in a bid to supposedly bring correction let me tell you something please look up i say this with every sense of humility not every man of god is authorized to correct the body of christ read your bible you don't just stand up and think because you have something to say there is there is a throne there is an authorization like a spiritual pass that is given unto people by election of grace that authorizes them to be able to define the boundaries of the spiritual operation of the body of christ 
it's not just because you have a mic and you have people listening to you you come and stand with all kinds of misguided perspectives and now begin to communicate truths that are limited by your own spiritual perception hallelujah so let's take it from there and um we'll touch on a few things and pray hallelujah revelation chapter one amen and amen and amen are you blessed verse 12 we'll read from 12 to 15 revelation chapter 1 12 to 15 there are a few thoughts maybe about four of them i will share with you on the body of christ and then we will pray okay and i turned to see the voice this is john the beloved when he was caught in the isle of patmos and i turned to see the voice that spake with me and being turned i saw what seven golden candlesticks or lampstands next verse and in the midst of the seven candlesticks one like unto the son of man clothed with a garment down to the foot and gird about the paths with a golden girdle let's just stop there really the remaining is just a description listen where was the son of man found in the midst of the seven lampstands and those seven lampstands john himself interpreted it that the seven lampstands represent the catholic church not roman catholic the word catholic means the universal church the ecclesia are we together now god's body the very body of christ this is a powerful revelation because regardless please listen regardless of the error and the confusion and now i know that there's a lot of that regardless of the scandals that break out here and there in church among men of god regardless of the divinations and the mix of witchcraft and the prophetic god is still in the church when you want to find where god is on earth the bible says he was found in the midst of the seven candlesticks you will never come to a point where you will not find god in the church this is a revelation that will help you to tread spiritual pathways listen in every assembly i don't care whether the man is a herbalist or a devil if there is one person who genuinely believes in the hand of god for the sake of that one person god will find a way of manifesting himself in the church whether or not he is received are we together now please listen do not carry this idea that god is is just in some places and not in some places no the bible says in the midst of the seven lampstands are we together you must have this understanding about the body of christ so that when you go for a conference and you watch the people playing games and the people trying to get money out of people as angry as you are there is a consolation he is still in the midst of the seven lampstands so you take your eyes away from all the error and the jamborees and you pay attention if you pay attention you will find god this is already a deliverance for someone because if you are looking for a perfect church you will not find one you will find a man of god who is warded but lousy while you are angry with that one you find the one that loves god but once in a while he touches beer when there's pressure are we together and then while you are running you find another one brothers and sisters in the midst of the confusion of the church christ is still in the church so you have your your predefined you have your idea about how service should be run koinonia is quite organized if during praise and worship you decide to just fly over here the protocol will carry you and take you out we are a bit organized but there's a church you go to that somebody can even be dancing and come and jump and the man of god will hold him and jump back and you now roll and enjoy you will go to that kind of church with your cynicism because you want everywhere to be like koinonia and then you do not have the flexibility to understand that god is not in the church because it is perfect god is in the church because he is the one perfecting it believe this and you will have a very very open spirit about the body of christ there is no way i cannot preach there is no way i can if tell me 
um, call, well, I, I, I don't mention names of men of God, but please permit me to just call one. Call Sir Gurma, that guy, Lagos, about an expert, Gurma Raji, right? If Gurma Raji invites me for dinner, I will go. I won't do it in a secret. I will do it in the open. You will snap me and it will be on Facebook. I will go and eat with you. The person who caught the meat you bought from the market today is doing worse things than Guru Maharaj. What they did with that cow before you ate it, but just because you didn't see it, you now bought the meat, you didn't pray over it, you boiled the thing and ate it. Well, you see, this hypocrisy and lies in the church is why we don't find God. Listen, there is no man who is influenced outside of his will. Being in the presence of evil is not what corrupts people. Opening up to the influence of evil is what corrupts a man. This is not a justification to be unruly with your spirit. But you must be conscious of what is within you. Above and beyond what is around you. Let me tell you, Christ is in his body. Don't think one man's anger about what the church is doing. So the, the argument that, oh, there are people who wear trousers and God is not in this church. There are people who veil their hairs and don't believe in wearing trousers. They are people of the law. God is not in this church. These ones are grace people. God is there. These ones are law people. God, these ones are Old Testament. Christ is everywhere. Trust me. Trust me. I've gone to too many places and I have wondered and marveled at the presence of God that came there. So when I go for a meeting, I expect imperfection from the vessels. So it doesn't surprise me. Are we together now? I went for a meeting one day and the man of God was preaching and they were clapping and he was carried away and he did something that, Kai, a Christian should not do. You know, we men of God, once you are carried away, especially when you joke and people clap, it now, you, you now digress and start saying things that don't make sense and he did something that was not nice. I said, well, God, this is your church. You are still in your holy temple. We fear you, but just have mercy on us. And my ears was open, and I was blessed. I was blessed. So if you go and sit down in a church where they say everybody fetch sand, for instance, you say, ah, what am I doing here? No, let me tell you. You can ignore the sand part and pay attention. Even if you don't learn any spiritual lesson, you can learn diligence. Even if you don't learn anything, you can learn excellence. If the message is not blessing you at all, look at the backdrop. All right, this is a new color. I've not seen you. There's something to learn. Because whatever it is, Christ is in his church. Listen to what I'm telling you and you will be so mature. You will marvel and wonder at your level of spiritual maturity. God's idea is not to make the whole world koinonia. That's, that's a dream. If that's what you think we are doing, well, I'm not one of those men of God who believes that will convert the whole world to become our church. It's a dream that God will stop by himself because that's not his idea. I think kingdom. So regardless of my personal contribution, I am also um, of the proposition that the church as a universal entity will make progress, even if it is not my unique so if somebody is healed, whether the person was healed from MFM or living faith, it doesn't matter. The most important thing is an avenue has been created for the power of God to find expression. Are we together now? God is still in the midst of his church. Please listen. Brothers and sisters, God does not use us because we are perfect people. No. Self-perfection is, is exhausting and unnecessary. Number two, <clears throat> Matthew chapter 16, verse 8. There are certain things that I want to straighten out tonight about the body of Christ so that our approach over the body of Christ will be very balanced because many men of God do not have the courage to teach this. Because of their bias, they run churches like their personal organization. Matthew 16, verse 18. is the second point that I want to communicate. It says, And I say unto thee, listen, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock, I will build my church. Everybody say, God will build his church. 
so who is the builder of the church god never left the building of the church to joshua selman or any other person he himself is the builder of the church imagine if god left the building of the church to me i will first gather all the people who are my tribe is that not what we do are you my tribe no you are not part of this building and we make it look like association of christian members of of northern i will build my church and if you allow me build it the gate of hell that means if the gate of hell is prevailing over your church you are building it because god said i will build it in such a way that it will be so fortified that the gates of hell will not prevail please listen i want you once and for all especially for those who are pastors or those who are trusting god for ministry bury this ownership mentality about ministry this is why pastors fight do you fight what is not your own if i want to touch a jimmy's child now is his child are we together now and so he will stand and defend it if i'm touching this flower you may feel bad but it's not your own personally so you have no right to challenge me the decorations department can be angry but at least not you so why do i become so personal if somebody says i don't like koinonia you take it personal because you are the geo you are the builder you will, you will pay for the bills you will manage all the crises there and you will run yourself to an early grave i learned this early in life god if you don't build your church let's be embarrassed together i am just a pipe the way you see let me tell you this is the reason why there is so much refusal to confront truth in the body of christ even when the truth has been known because everybody is conscious of his own church so we run we run ministries like business ventures i have two thousand members in my ministry and my church these are my sons these are my daughters they are everybody's at my beck and call and then you now try to spiritualize it by saying god is helping us ownership mentality as a leader you should be responsible over that which god has given to you but you see we are stewards in the kingdom if men of god knew that they are stewards they would not kill themselves i see the way a lot of pastors yeah i mean you see somebody he didn't come to church you almost kill him i didn't see you in church why to mean you reduce the number it's because of you they 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 thought we are, they, they have been writing that we are 50. Now you are the one who is making them think we are 48. You see, that kind of mindset. Listen, listen, I'm speaking to you. If you don't relinquish the, the pressure that ownership brings, it will kill you early. That's why people fight. Hallelujah. That's why people fight. If you ever want to see expansion in anything and in ministry, you must surrender everything thing to god you see the way we do koinonia the, the workers are aware god forbid but if i die today you only cry for seven days today's what friday i assure you by tuesday or wednesday you'll be used to it ah apostle is dead i'm dead How, i mean what happened this guy even released long life what, what you are saying is irrelevant because i'm they will bury me take me my mother will cry all the people they will cry and everybody will be fine when they dump me. that's all i tell you and by next week koinonia continues the only thing you will miss in this ministry is my unique grace i preach enough messages to bless the body of christ but there are pastors the day they miss service everybody will know this service was a mess where are you pastor where are you listen never have that kind of attitude over the body of christ the best of any member is only an effective member no one person equals the church the 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 recognition of this is equal to wisdom are we together i learned this early and so i let him take the glory he's the one building koinonia and for as long as i allow him to keep building it that's the reason why we do ministry pressure free there's no frowning at everybody frowning at the offering 
Once they are dropping, you are now looking. You see five naira in the transparent side of the basket. You are angry. Five naira, how much is generator? How much is this? If you, if you want to fund ministry by yourself and be responsible, oh, no, 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 no. Get set to kill yourself. I'm too young. I plan to live very long. Forget this story about death, I told you. I have the, co I have the confidence to say it because I plan to live long. The mysteries of life that surround me are more than any devil bomb blast accident etc that's why i can talk about it i scare death to his face and go to bed because death is a spirit it's not one of those touch not no 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 come on ask it the sun will no more give me sunlight by day the moon will no more give me moonlight by night Jehovah will be my everlasting light. He'll be your glory, your strength, and your sight. The light of the moon will be like the light of the sun. And the light of the sun will shine seven times as bright. When Yahweh finds up the wounds of this world, He heals all the bruises in listen god is the builder of the church and like every member in the body or the corporate body you can allow god to build your life because your own body not koinonia my body is the temple of the holy spirit so i allow him to build me into prosperity i allow him to build me into health i allow him to build me into increase I allow him by aligning to him. Every other thing is a work of grace. My own part is alignment through obedience. Are we together? Listen, I'm speaking to someone tonight. Come on to me, Jesus says. All ye that are labor and are heavy laden, you are putting upon yourself self-inflicted frustration. There are pastors who before a service starts, they will call the department. How many people are there now? Say, Kite, the way it is, it's like 80, 81. <gasps> I was 81. Today that is a convention. Depression for no reason. And I will build my church. Papa Oyediko was sharing how that when they were dedicating Covenant University, the Lord asked him to lie down flat on the ground in front of the gate are we together now different men of god have their different skills of surrender papa Ia deboy will kneel down once he just goes on stage he will kneel down before everybody which is uh, what they call that thing tambourine say look don't be carried away that i'm among the world's hundred most influential people i can sing and dance before god other people roll on the ground before god all that they are doing is saying lord let the people see that it is the finger of god not the brain of a man your brain is too small to run ministry ministry pressure will blow it into pieces hand it over to the all wise god listen every time you see supernatural things in the church don't fight it it is the finger of god because most times the reason why we doubt the fact that it is God is we look at the individuals that God is using. The protocol people are here and they will tell you most times when we travel for administration, most people, did you know that over 70% of the people who have been blessed through this ministry have never seen me. They don't even know how I look. And I love it, you cannot imagine. We are dropping from the airport and then we come out and then they are looking. They greet Victor, how are you? They greet Mike, and then they look at Yerima. Oh, Yerima is quiet. He looks like he's the one. And then I'm there with polos and my earphone, and I'm just moving. And then I say, how are you? And I can see the disappointment. We labor to borrow jeep. We labor to do all of these things, to carry this thing. But there is this treasure in earthen vessels. Listen, when you know this, no matter how high any result you see is, you will not be afraid of it. 
because you can see where the man's limitation stop you know from here it's no longer joshua selman this is the hand of god jesus said if i by the finger of god cast out these demons the kingdom has come to you same thing with honor we're talking with um while the protocol person was driving me eddie was driving me coming we we're discussing with him in the car and then i was telling him i said can you imagine how uh what was i even talking about i was talking about honor how people crave for honor in the body of christ once somebody is entering when i was coming i saw the media people chasing me with camera just snapping and i said this these are the things that kill men of god you snap your way into death unnecessary honor let me tell you something i have found out by experience that honor is a mantle if god has not given you there is nothing that will bring it to your life what someone did that brought honor you would do it and they would trivialize it but when that grace comes no matter what you do and jabez was more honorable which service did he conduct it was an anointing hallelujah and i will build my church i learned this principle of absolute surrender long ago in my life and it's one of the foundational things that's why when men of god stand and they are bragging i this and that my shoe is fifty thousand. this suit came from this and i said lord i know how the suit came it came through favor favor i'm unashamed of the favor of god oh you were smart fine you qualified after 20 years of ministry to be sitting in this position i was carried on the wings of grace i know how i got there and so i don't become foolish he is the builder and so i give him all the glory i will not say lord you are the builder then when it's time for shine i say god this is my moment just allow me to avoid me. to you be all the glory the reason why we don't give god glory in church is because we do not recognize that he is the builder the leaders know everybody knows i tell you that anybody climbs this pulpit one day to brag and make noise as though it's his strength I, I i don't know what will happen to that person maybe thunder will just strike on his head and drop him dead there koinonia is a mystery held only by the hand of god only by the hand of god and not the wisdom of a man he said rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from god he said no man for no man can do these things except god be with him is god with you and are you allowing him to build your life are we together say after me god is building the church that's why let me say something except for very very um, for few exemptions the idea of people running away from their church because they feel it's not hot enough is not correctly kingdom because god is building his church as lukewarm as that church is one day the fire of god will fall on one quiet youth who is around one at the back of one toilet praying for three hours every day he will just pray and go back and say lord this boredom in this church i am taking the burden every day he's just praying in tongues three hours one day he will have an encounter that's what happened to apostle babalola right quietly he went to tap uh, um i don't know if it was palm wine or something I, I can't remember the story now and the fire of god fell upon him he saw a whirlwind like that of moses and a voice spoke from it he had an encounter and then there were already a group of prophets who refused to endorse him in the ministry and one day they were watching him from the window during a prayer session and the guy healed a madman in their presence and the lord told them this guy is one of the people to carry that apostolic grace that was the only condition that they received him and extended a hand of fellowship for him brothers and sisters please let god build your life all this bragging i'm beautiful that's why it's working you will see the limitation of beauty when it is only beauty building your life i'm rich that's why i i i got first class that's why remember last was it last month or month before last when we prayed for a first class student here who was jobless how do you explain that please make up your mind for the body of christ and for yourself that from today 
you will never be embarrassed to directly acknowledge God in all your ways I'm sharing with you a principle that will bless you in all your ways acknowledge him right Proverbs chapter 3 when you read from verse 5 to 6 to 7 really that's verse 6 in all your ways acknowledge him and there is a promise he will direct make straight your path my ministry my business my intelligence many guys are around me even them they know that i'm fine continue instead of you to use the opportunity and say lord thank you there are many ladies nobody will even say good morning to see let me tell you men can deceive you but when you deceive yourself you are really in deception everybody here we know where god brought us from everybody knows i know where god brought me from so i'm not going to allow all of the blessings from ministry get me carried away some of us will not acknowledge it by ourselves but if others try to do it in a way you know is destructive you will enjoy it it's like saying i won't buy beer with my own money but if sam buys for me i won't mind you are still a drunkard because a drunkard is not the one who buys beer by himself is the one who drinks it whether it was given as a gift or bought with your money an arrogant person right a boastful person the one that will face destruction from god is the one who always looks for an opportunity for vain glory i'm not saying don't honor people don't acknowledge people i know you love me you respect me you honor me i love you and i honor you too however there is a limit and it is the responsibility of everybody to draw the line there are things people do for me i say no no this is too much And I will build my church. If you allow me build it, the gates of hell will not prevail. Say amen. amen. Number three. Is God blessing us? Please pray in one minute before we continue and say, Lord, build my life. I've been trying to do this thing in my own strength. Please pray. Trying to enter a relationship by your own strength. You tried makeup, it didn't work. You tried with on, it didn't work. You tried buying designers, it didn't work. Because it doesn't work by all those things. It takes the mercy of God. Open your mouth and pray. I've tried it by my strength. I've tried succeeding. I've stretched my intellect from border to border tonight. I give it up. I give it up. Please pray. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Lord, if you do not help me, nobody can help me. If you don't take me from where I am to the place of destiny, there is no possibility outside of you. Can you pray? In all your ways, acknowledge you. Hallelujah. Please listen. Let it be a culture in your life. Every time men begin to clap, become an usher point them to Jesus hallelujah and I if I be lifted up from the earth I will draw all men you never see me say I did this the power of my might I did this do you know every time we finish koinonia when I go back home many times after counseling people I just, I have one small chair. It's my little altar with God. I just get down on my knees. Sometimes when I come, especially during the miracle service, mighty things that God has done, you know, that's how I can just, sometimes I can, I can stay in that position and that's how I pass the night, just acknowledging him. I don't cry before people, but I cry before God. I just sit down and I see his faithfulness. When we had 25,000 likes on Facebook, exactly 25,000, I was on my knees before God and I said, Lord, I know people with TV ministries whose Facebook page is not even up to 3,000. It's the faithfulness of God. I said, Lord, to be able to influence people, I hear that already, this is just like the second service. There are over 1,000 plus people following us on Facebook already. I mean, on um, our online radio. Right now, connected, listening to me from around the world. During my birthday last year, there were about 16 nations 
16 nations called to say happy birthday I've not gone to those almost all of those nations maybe but the faithfulness of God if you learn to acknowledge God some of you if God gives you half of the anointing he has given me your knee will never touch the ground again because of arrogance the knees that used to touch the ground this was how I used to cry in his presence in the night on concrete floor people are sleeping and I'm crying and say God please if you ever will need to use a man I'm available then I could not afford suit now that I can afford it that suit must rub the ground except it's not my own if it tears let it tear be lifted high be lifted high for your glory be lifted high be lifted high be lifted high for your glory be lifted high in my life be lifted high be lifted high for your glory of your money you you that's the day you will know you don't fear god because prosperity gives you options can you stand and look at 100 million 1 billion and hold it and say lord this will not take my place in your place in my life oh god bless me for where you began to love god the day one guy said i love you by yourself you have not prayed since that day till today no need for prayer again the day someone said ah you are pretty the day they said need one small prayer and two people fell under the anointing god never saw you again ah this is how people cheat themselves out of the realm of the spirit they cheat themselves out of the place of power i tell you this is why the body of christ may never come into unity because of this spirit of pride i did this i built the church i did this it was by my wisdom i prophesied and it happened i spoke to her and she came with triplets the bible says a man can have nothing except it be given to him by the father this was the secret of david david knew the hand of god he will say many are they that rise up against me many are they that say where is his god he said but thou O lord you are a shield for me that i have not fallen is not a product of my strength oh i'm this i don't like ladies keep quiet and give god all the praise i'm anointed i finished three days dry come and see what god did in the meeting who told you who told you he does these things that men may fear him let me tell you something i show you a secret that will make god foul to keep lifting you men may talk they, their talk will they, their saliva will dry from their mouth but you will just be rising by a mystery no human can explain be lifted high be lifted high higher and higher lord be lifted high be lifted high
this is already a message to somebody this may be the missing key behind your glory that just faded from last year you found out that it was like Ichabod there are people like that I watch preachers on TV and without a sense of cynicism I see the fading of the glory people are still celebrating but those who are in the spirit know there is nothing new in this grace it's dry money is still coming but it's dried I tell you I've had ministers that I respect so much I've had ministers that I acknowledge the dealings of God in their life speak in recent times and I was shocked how can a man touch a level of spiritual reality and not have anything else to tell the body there are people who have been etched out of the program of God because of this pride there are musicians who have left the scene of Nigerian gospel music never to come back again because right now if you don't give them 1.5 they will not come you have to talk to multiple PAs they've forgotten that it was one song they didn't even write it came that day they didn't eat and they were praying and God said let me bless you and he brought one song that opened them up and from that day have you noticed that most of these people any other song they write no matter what they do it will never sell again because it was never about the song it was about the grace there are some of us here please hear me i'm speaking to you i know pastors who anything they did used to work no matter how small it was like a charm they can organize a program in 24 hours but right now whether you put balloon whether you fly around with plane nothing happens because it about the glorious departed i tell you something the sin of pride is worse is worse than the sin of drunkenness and all of these other things when god will lift a man and you now stand and forget the god of your salvation i spoke to a, a man of god one day i used to know that man very interesting then god had not done anything much in his life but i spoke to him recently and his arrogance oozed out like an odor. I could literally smell it with my physical nose. I was talking to him on the phone. There are pastors who until you now have a seat, they forgot how God took them. You want to see Joshua Selman stand here with your 50,000 or your 100,000. Not that God led you to honor. Not that they challenged you in church to sow. They now stand. As you are dropping it in the basket then you see the man of god ah, quarter for me to do that may god take my life for what be lifted high be lifted high for your glory be lifted high be lifted high be lifted high. Please sit down. We have to hurry up. I already sense the presence of God. Let's hurry up. Number three. The third thing that we need to understand. Listen. For the body of Christ to attain the unity of faith. Is to separate between doctrines and personal dealings with the spirit. Please listen. What I'm telling you tonight is very deep. Pay attention. There is a difference. Listen between your personal path of spiritual progress as earmarked by God on the strength of what he's making you become are we together now we all start our journey into the things of the spirit together but as we proceed the election of grace diverges men into different trajectories in the spirit are we together now and so if both of us start together and you are called into the prophetic ministry I'm called into the apostolic ministry. You are called into business. Somewhere along the line, there will be a divergence. The same way students start course, science, whether engineering, medicine, you do the same thing. Are we together? As you progress, what happens? You now begin to move to different programs that are custom built to produce that thought, that knowledge in you. Now, the trouble is this. Most people especially preachers have not been able to draw the line 
between their personal dealings with God and some of the ordinances and the covenants that they are compelled to make to strengthen their personal work with God so that they can be effective in dispensing the dimension of God committed to them. They, they do not draw that line. And everything, their personal dealing in the spirit, they ship it to the altar and teach it as a doctrine. Are we together now? Listen. Paul said, all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. Are we together now? Did you know that God can come, my dear? God can look at this lady and in his personal dealing with her, because she's on her way to become the wife of a man of God and a man of influence. Are we together now? God can tell her, my personal dealing with you, you are not going to wear trousers. Are we together now? That is not about wrong or right. You are occupying a position where you will be a mother to many. And I need you to be as modest as possible so that you can give the clearest picture of a virtuous woman. That is a personalized dealing. But by the time you now ship your personal experience and use it as a template to define virtue, you bring error in the body of Christ. Are we together now? There are personal things God can give a man. Are we together now? Stringent rules that God has given people. It has nothing to do with old and new covenant. It is your personal work with God. God can be so meticulous as to define for you the kind of clothes to wear because of an assignment. God can be so meticulous to define to you the kind of, the number of children to have. God can say because of the enormity of this assignment, you cannot have more than two children. If you like, have eight. But I, my recommendation for efficiency is two. It's left for you to sacrifice your personal ambition of wanting ten children. To say, Lord, for your glory. If you are lonely after two, you buy a puppy. But anything outside that, you position yourself. Are we together? God can say, because of where I'm lifting you, you cannot have three cars at any given point. People who sow 20 cars, find the best three and give the rest out. And people, they don't know these are ordinances that control power in the spirit. It's not something, there are things that God has given me, like personal rules. It's in the Bible, Samson was given a code. They said, Samson, the secret of your anointing, is tied to your hair you are a nazarene separate unto god let no razor touch your head you can shave but not bow and delilah came he tried to do every kind of thing and she went to his hair bob the hair and bob the glory away from his life until he died are we together now listen most when i see the way many ministers are careless i'm surprised because you see increase in ministry can make you forget the precepts and the ordinances of god that were given to you there are agreements that i had with god i've done all kinds of crazy things there was a time the lord gave me an instruction i put hundred like one one thousand like hundred thousand on the ground and the lord said i should pray as i'm matching it that's how i kept matching it i was praying in tongues for hours declaring that finances will never have dominion over me will i tell you to do it it is a personalized dealing are we together now please listen this is giving us maturity separate between the ordinances of god given to you in the secret place for the purpose of efficiency and doctrines that are established by the integrity of the world they may not be wrong but God gave you that because of the capacity he has also given you. Somebody like Papa Adeboe, his covenant with God was that every time somebody before like you worship God, Papa he would go down Adeboe on his knees. His Are we together now? Whether in London, before like Obama, God, before anybody, he would do this. Are we together now? Are we together now? Whether in London, there are people because of their covenant with God they will never own more than two personal houses they will make many rich but they themselves are limited 
for many years many years i wanted to buy a car god stopped me i don't know how many times there are times i've smiled thinking i just went to god oh god i like this no way will i stop you from buying a car if you want to follow my own path for you god didn't direct you and it took <laughs> what is your dealing with god there is no man of the secret place who will not eventually have personalized dealings with God where unique ordinances will be given to you from God hmm. it was William Branham that was given a sign by the Lord that every time his right hand begins to shake the angel of the Lord that accompanies his ministry is in the place and he will stand for hours and people are watching him and he says he's waiting for the arrival of the angel and people are angry which angel we've been here and then his hands begin to shake and he says the angel is here and you begin to see dramatic things you try it you don't know whether it's demonic or you see how spirits get into people because you now begin to see yours and say ah william branham whereas he's a spirit god is warning you the atmosphere of god's glory is causing a spirit to react instead of you to cry for help you are there rejoicing that you are growing listen it is costly and dangerous to take your personal spiritual presence and bring it as a sign just like the example i shared did you know that there are ladies that god will give them rooms no heavy makeup aside from powder and just something does it stop there he may not necessarily fight it but what he's saying because of what i am making you become can you sacrifice this for me are we together listen if you love the lord there is nothing he will make as a demand from you that will be too much to give him hallelujah it is lack of this separation between personal dealings i've done all kinds of crazy things with god but i cannot bring it as a doctrine i i stopped sharing my experiences the only experience that most people have had is my encounter with jesus there are many more but i will not share it because these are personal dealings and if you are not careful when you begin to share it it will make people to deviate from having confidence in the knowing the word to begin to search for encounters and when the devil sees your appetite for sight in the spirit is the exact raw material he needs to deceive you one day you will see something that will not be of god Hallelujah. So many altars today, many constitutions of churches have the personal geos encounter as the rule for the church. If geo does not eat salt because God suspected that he may have high blood pressure and God before that time, you see that just a simple rule. Now he will now add it. If you eat salt in that church, you are anti what god is doing that's wrong that's a personal dealing there are people read the bible because of certain kinds of anointings they were forced to be vegetarians so that they can host certain kinds of the anointing but you don't stop somebody from eating jesus for instance never ate meat he only ate fish cereals it's in the bible you never see a record where jesus ate meat who told Paul kill and eat? Answer me. Who told when when remember those unclean animals? Pig everything when it came down. Ah, Peter said, like Jesus, me too. And Jesus, ah, I had to do you are not going to the cross. I know what I was doing. He said, kill and eat. He didn't say just kill and look at it. Kill and eat. Listen, you can see two people. They will do the same thing god will keep quiet over somebody but for the other person god will say let's go back to the secret place i are saying god me again everybody is praying for one one hour god is letting them you pray for four hours god is saying you are not being serious and you are like god what is this watch this you don't compare your work with god with what is happening to the other person there is a template air marked for you based on what god is doing in you and based on where god is taking you to separate doctrines a good pastor 
will know how to teach people the truth void you may at times initiate your personal experiences to buttress on some point but the message cannot be hinged upon your personal experiences your personal experiences are too mysterious and haphazard it will take only you to understand them when you share it with people it will lead them into confusion there was a time in my life for instance where the lord asked me not to read my bible for one week you see that kind of strange thing imagine teaching you now you say thank god i always knew that this is my not having appetite to read the bible is not backsliding i've been looking for an excuse even apostle don't say that to us i'm even saying it now warning you it was because god i was in a season of my life where god was teaching me certain things are we together now and god was teaching me that it is more profitable for me to receive the word than just to read it and the lord began to tell me that i am ever learning then but not coming to the knowledge of the truth i was obsessed with rema i would sit down with dick's bible and eat it cover to cover greek words check everything just look at it and i knew that something was wrong and the lord began to speak to me it's not just about dick's bible and strong concordance do you believe the little i have given you because faithfulness is the key to increase not just careless knowledge and the lord began to teach me that there are pastors that i'm allowing them to clean along certain paradigms in the spirit but this is unnecessary for your kind of ministry so you must stay with me to teach you the diet combination that will produce that apostolic grace in your life and so because of that it was an experiment for seven days but i cannot share that experience and use it as a doctrine hallelujah is god blessing you how many people have we confused as pastors with our personal experience because the man of god wants two children like i said anybody that has three four you are eyeing the person in your church five you are looking with anger six you are looking with rebellion why put people under pressure just because there are certain people because of their call they may not marry I hope you know oh yes men and women alike because of the nature at least we saw it with the apostle paul because of the nature and the demands i always imagine if paul had a wife he would have been as good as not marrying because the number of times she will see him in her lifetime is countable prison today ephesus today diana will influence somebody to go and you know all kinds of things so god knows why he just said look paul I know I will compensate you when you come to heaven, but for now, forget about the issue of women and pay attention. So if you are not married, does that mean you pressure people and every time somebody says, I want to get married, you there are people like that. Any area that is not a major area of dealing in the spirit, they don't pay attention to people when they are having those issues. They don't deal with them in that area. personalized dealings God can give you dealings food clothes the way to communicate certain things to do and not do it's not just the cause of the law it is his unique dealing for you because he has studied your vulnerability and your strength and he has seen that it's only in this kind of atmosphere like a buffer he creates for you so that you are safe and if you walk within the jurisdiction of his description i'm telling you you will never fall praise the lord let's take the last point and then we we'll pray is god blessing us today hmm. romans chapter 12 from verse 3 we'll read the a part and establish the last point and then we'll pray thank you jesus romans 12 verse 3 for i say through the grace given to me to every man listen that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think right but to think soberly according as god has dealt to every man the measure of faith listen 
the bible says there is a way a man can have a perception of himself that is correct but there is a way a man a church can have a perception of himself herself to a point that the bible calls it more highly that means you have crossed the boundary the acceptable level the last point this one has troubled me personally the inability closely related to the point i just shared the inability to separate between thus saith the lord and our human opinions please write it down the inability for ministries pastors to separate between thus saith the lord a prophetic word coming from god and the sincere opinion of a man a combination of his exposure his intelligence please look up there are many churches today that even if the man of god coughs people say yes lord because the man has created an atmosphere i'm not laughing listen please we are, pray, we are going to pray now there are men of god who have created a picture of ministry that everything that comes from them is of god are we together we do not know that the holy spirit is not a fool there are many times paul will speak and say i speak as a man this is my opinion my frank intellectual analysis on this issue because you see we we have transferred this inferiority that came from the continent of africa into our lives and we feel that the only way to respect us is when um we give people an idea that everything that comes out of the man of the the words of the man of god came directly from god what has this led in the body people refusing to marry because a man could not separate his opinion i can look at a lady come mama i can look at mama now are we together and see a very beautiful lady and say ah mama this lady is a nice lady oh. if you have been praying i think this is this lady is worth praying about that's a human opinion he's saying amen <laughs> i'm busy using him as an example and you are saying amen <laughs> hallelujah oh yes ah he knows what he's here in koinonia to receive are we together now so i am listen listen i'm telling him sincerely oh look at this lady we have all watched her in koinonia she loves god she's a serious lady she's serious if god is sending you to a ministry this is the kind of person to be a pastor's wife not by any vision by intelligence and sight and logical conclusion based on the principles of the word of god you know a bad woman when you see you don't need a dream you see all the attributes you know an irresponsible man when you see him you don't need any angel to appear and say this guy is not an he's not he doesn't like the things of god you are unequally yoked what you love is what he hates the more you are growing the more he's angry with your spiritual growth is that a good man what prayer do you need about it you pack your load and leave god gave us wisdom he said wisdom is profitable to direct so back to my example i can now tell mama but if because of my arrogance i now say mama that's your wife wife that's that's your that's your husband are we together now let me tell you what i've done to both of them i have tied them in an unholy i have put a stronghold upon their minds are we together now whereas this guy may be looking at another lady his heart is somewhere he has even started the process laying the foundation and all of this and now i'm coming to scatter the whole building because of a supposed vision another thing is seeing somebody and tell him i'm looking at you and i um go and start trailer business this guy is saying god is sending me to oil and gas he say trailer and because he respects me this guy for 10 years is trying to buy one truck are we together now listen men of god have destroyed the hopes the dreams the lives of people if 
you need money in your church and a man says i want to build i've gathered six million and you want to say so don't say god is demanding your isaac i'm telling you now my polite proposal is better than an armed robber's gun think about it that's not prophecy that's a threat you are threatening the man to withdraw his six million and deposit it otherwise armed robbers will come and truly if armed robbers come one day you say ah this man is a man of god no he's not a man of god that's not the reason why armed robbers came listen every pastor and man of god here listen we owe god accountability you know years ago i didn't used to know the if the effect of my words on people i used to think when i just speak to people carelessly it won't mean anything to them but as i kept growing in leadership i got to learn that the words of a leader is like the words of a father it makes impact you can look at a lady right now and say i'm proud of you just that little step to you is no big deal but that would be the basis of our seriousness in the spirit ah, ah. joshua selman said he's proud of me ah out of everybody in koinonia because to you it's no big deal because you are used to being celebrated to someone who has never received a comment from somebody the same way you look at somebody and say you're a bad girl you were joking and the lady is crying for one week oh god i repent wrong words we have not separated thus said the lord from our sincere human opinion there are times people have met me over issues and i've told them honestly god has not told me anything about this issue however let's look at it from the bible okay this is what you are doing no the bible prohibits this try this take it this way and then sometimes in the midst of it god will speak expressly and i'll say this is the word of the lord to you and when i think what i said was of god if i later discover that at my level of growth or for whatever reason i didn't hear well i will not have the embarrassment to say sorry i think we should pray about this thing again that day i thought it was god that said you should buy a bicycle but right now i found out that god has no business with you buying any bicycle let's pray do you have the courage brothers and sisters to separate between the word of god spoken to you to people or to yourself and your sincere human opinion please sit down the body of christ has been destroyed because of this a man makes a mistake simply acknowledge it was a mistake he said are you joking even my mistakes are pro no 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 that dimension now is not of god once you get to that point is insecurity spiritualized hallelujah because you see in africa we have a lot of respect for the words of men of god and please listen pastors heads of departments and maybe all the people in our community online don't be under pressure to speak to people if god has not said anything it does not mean you are not anointed hallelujah so we have all kinds of people confused right now how many people have made mistakes in their marriage because he was a man of God that said so. You must marry so 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 and so person. Now he married the lady. And he doesn't know what to do with her. And they are all angry. And they are confused. And the man of God is there. I know men of God who have looked at people and say relocate. You shouldn't be doing anything in Nigeria. And sincerely he just perceived in his spirit. That this guy should be abroad. He now said go to Kenya. The guy is living like a, a fugitive in kenya whereas he was living with authority he sold his house sold everything and left could it be that there are people seated here right now and is the supposed word from a man of god that has kept you limited you wanted to do business and the man said you don't have any any business doing any business right and now you've sat down because you thought that oh my own is just ministry that is coming and you are getting poor you are getting broke the day you went to go and meet uh, maybe the lady's parents for introduction they say what are you doing you say according to what my pastor told me he said i should not worry it would be like the twinkling of an eye and the father looks at you and he say you have the courage to 
come and enter my gate the next time you come i will call police and they will catch you and you go back disappointed oh god did you not speak to me i refuse to be a fool i refuse to let the pursuit of god look like stupidity whenever there is no direct word from the lord i work with the principles of the word how many men of god were doing well in ministry until a prophet or an apostle somewhere in a meeting prophesied to them i know pastors who have no business having churches they are not supposed to open churches but they went and met a man of god now the man may not be wrong but he spoke a word he said i'm looking at you and i see 17 branches god is giving you speed the guy started dying the money that god allocated for the program he now started spreading 17 branches around and now he's killing him weekly budget 2.5 whereas his annual money that he's receiving from the small members is 500 000. where is he going to get the other money from so he starts lying he starts creating a prophecy session drop your 30 000 i speak to you that's what has led men of god into all of these things because of pressure separate between the word of the lord directly see and a sincere communication of the truths of the kingdom there are times i prepare a message not that god told me necessarily i sat down as a leader i understand how to build people i know that if you have a ministry with people you must build them in the area of spiritual growth build them in character build them in finances family life leadership interpersonal skills these are things that are we, we are human beings god does not need to tell me that the wisdom of the world has taught me that you must build people holistically there are times i come on stage here and god completely from everything i've planned that does not mean he did not give the inspiration but at this current time this is what he wants to be said and i'm unashamed i drop it there are times i come here and i tell you this is what the lord spoke to me this word came from god this is what he wants us to do it is not unspiritual to acknowledge your humanity listen to my message why revivals die the humanity of men people have sent me names dio uh shegu who are who they say apostle who do you think among these three guys i said no 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 god has not told me anything i don't even want to start deceiving you but there are some of us here especially some of us who are just starting in ministry you are under pressure when you get that kind of text you just laugh and do tinini tanana and then it just lands on dio and you send back say dio i hear dio and now the lady and maybe dio is not even born again you now pin this lady with this this unspiritual brother for many years and she cannot move forward i deliver anyone here who has been under the influence of a wrong prophetic word that has tied you down and has refused you from moving forward in the name of the lord jesus christ a man of god who is limited in scope sees somebody who wants to do international business and he says no this is not of god he's using his limitation about his poor understanding on financial intelligence and destroying the passion of another person to expand you don't do that and then the worst part is when we start saying it's from god so right now brothers let me just buttress on this point but brothers cannot come and meet a lady you can't come and meet a sincere lady and just tell her oh you love god you have to start saying look it was by 241 between 241 or 242 uh, sorry i was dragging you at me around 241 or 242 i was just strolling around somewhere and i saw what looked like a vision i said lord is this you and he was silent now the lady is standing and wondering what's this guy saying now of course she knows where you are going to and he says look on a very good day me I, i'm just minding my business but how can i be negligent of this heavenly call now that i've seen this call and now the lady wants to say no but she has been threatened by what a vision god said you are my wife i'm not saying go and think about it what is the answer the lady said well it's too early i don't know you is this what you are saying me too do i know the vision i i saw it 
As funny as what I'm saying is, this is the template, the only way many brothers in many churches know how to ask a lady. They just come and say, what did, are you still wasting my time? Or I plan to marry based on what God told me. He showed me July. Are you doing this thing or not? Let's just know. And it keeps backfiring again and again and again. Because you see, the laws of the spirit are unemotional. This again is also the reason why people are confused. And let me just touch on this and then we'll pray. Today, you go to bed and you see Amaka. Bless you, darling. Tomorrow, as soon as you wake up, you see Shalhoma. You are washing your face and you saw her face. I say, I reject it. You saw it again. Are we together now? Next week, you now see Martha. And then the individual, is she sincere? Yes. Is she sincere? Yes. But because you have tied your, your paradigm, are we together now? To only visions, you are confused. You saw seven sisters in one week. You are not a bad brother, but you are seriously confused. You can see me, come matter. You can see me wearing suit and matter dressed like this. It can mean intimacy, not marriage. You have to go back to God to find out what he's saying. That you saw what looked like suits does not mean it's marriage. A ring can be a symbol of authority, not a vow to say I do. You see, you, 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 you come down and then be careful some of these books. Please, um, um, it's my job and my duty to address these things. Although that's really not what I'm talking about. But since it has come, let's just let it land. There are books many of us have read written by sincere people who have been confused. That's why a man can be married and now be looking at a lady and then another prophet will come and say, well, I don't know how to tell you this thing, but this lady you have married, although you are 10 years in marriage, she's the reason why your ministry is not moving forward. I stand as a prophet of God to declare to you, is there a lady called Jane in Koinonia? He said, yes, yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm, I said, leave your wife, go to Jane. Now, the man will not leave her in one day. But automatically, he was not eating her food again. And then he now calls Jane, Jane, Jane. How now? I was service today. Jane will say, fine, daddy. He said, why must you call me daddy? <laughs> it, has, it has started. I will talk. Oh, my name is Joshua Selman. <laughs> and the wife is surprised. He's prayed. He has suddenly developed an unusual passion for prayer in the night. And you go to the parlor and you see he's, he's secretly calling. Jane, what does it take to do your wedding? Shout, shout. And he's planning on leaving his wife because somebody said, first say the Lord. And in the church, we are so unspiritual that anybody just stands and because he tells you something that is true, then he now uses it to confuse you. Please listen to me anyone here who has left his financial pursuit because a man of God spoke to you and said you don't need it go back and carry those notebooks and start reading it otherwise you would you would chew your hands in the future to come the Bible says a lazy man will not eat it has nothing to do with with vision are we together now if you graduate and you want to become a millionaire from you've nothing is coming in your hands now get a job and start from there do you need a vision there are two ways God directs men. He can say start and he can say stop. So if he doesn't say anything, start. I need to address this. Thus say the Lord has destroyed a lot of people. So we have gotten into all kinds of things. Thank you, my dear. I went to pray for a woman some years ago. God is my witness. I saw over 21 anointing oils. And this 21 anointing oils was from different men of God and different prophets. 21. None of them was free. By the way, not one was free. She went to one woman, one prophetess. I was told that if you go to the woman's place, now I'm not criticizing. Maybe the woman is listening to the message. Hallelujah. 
and then the woman said you have to camp in her hostel you must buy her water you must eat only from her restaurant who does not know that's business skill no 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 don't threaten me with spirituality who does not know if i have a ministry wouldn't i want you to eat from my restaurant it's a very sincere desire to generate revenue don't spiritualize it and make it look like if you eat my rice there's there's the way that rice this is is it not uncle Ben's or whatever they brought it they, they cook that rice you spiritualize it and threaten people there are members who cannot go and buy food in certain places because some men of god have supposedly put an embargo Haba. you want to take your children to a good school but the man of god has said if it's not my school except you are not under this ministry and you are threatened i set you free i deliver you from that nonsense this night in the name of jesus christ one of the benefits of spiritual growth is freedom marry me or you die you say oh, no problem i'm already dead you don't threaten me i marry because of love not force if you are in a hurry go and find somebody and go and meet the parents we give this terrible idea about god and it is the prophetic and apostolic ministry that has brought this bad idea about god everything that a man wants he uses prophecy to make it happen the lord is speaking to me right now everybody package 10 10 000, come and drop it rub my shoes with it it's a sign of speed the speed i've experienced in two years of ministry carry that seed mr man you need money no problem god designed a system to honor you don't tell lies and threaten the people for when god speaks there is grace for performance there are many angry people you see them remove the envelope and they are just walking to the man of God with anger. They get there and they just kneel down and just drop the tear and say, pray for me. There are many members are angry and I foresee a revolt if we don't change. Because as TV ministry is exposing people right now, a day will come Koinonia is going on air and more people will hear these truths. And when it happens, people will say, pastor, my money. Because all that long story you have been threatening me i will say it without any fear or favor i'm a man of god there is a way i can come to you right now and tell you i am hungry please give me food and you will bless me but when i come and say the lord instructs even when god commanded elijah he didn't go to one and say god has said it did you hear bring food he said madam bring food for me Thus saith the Lord. People have mortgaged their vehicles. They carried their jeeps and gave a man of God. Because he said, God said, bring it. God is not an idiot. Now, don't get me wrong. There are times that those kinds of instructions will come. I can't tell you how many times God has made a demand of my resources, demand of any and everything. However, anything that is not done by love brothers and sisters is sin don't let any man threaten you to marry him in the name of prophecy don't let any man threaten you the worst one is becoming part of a church because of prophecy so like all these guys now serving the lord the day now they are ready to go and start their ministries or do something the man of god now stands and says if any of you leaves this assembly except i'm not a man of god there is a curse upon you nonsense there's no such thing as that except if they believe it they'll go and die as a result of lack of carelessness and preparation not because of insecurity expressed in a threat are we together now there are so many pastors they can't marry they can't get a job they can't move because they are serving a self-centered man of god who is enjoying their ministry and will never allow them to move the moment they want to move you say the course remember and they now stay back i deliver you tonight in the name of the lord jesus christ Any man deceive you. listen our god is a good god our god is not a wicked god who comes out to just kill people and destroy their lives men kill themselves 
because of their violation of kingdom principles we are going to pray Ephesians chapter 4 says it is for this reason he gave unto some when you read from verse 12 apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors teachers he says for the edification the maturing of the saints that's what is happening to you I'm not teaching you this listen please look up to be judgmental and imbalanced because some of you your various churches whether here or at home you have men of God that do some of these things the goal is not to go back with the spirit of arrogance and rebellion but the goal is to have a settled confidence immovable and unshakable to separate between thus saith the Lord and anything that is a lie hallelujah but I know whom I have believed he says and I am persuaded that he is able so number one I spoke about the fact that God is always in the church I'm doing a review everyone say God is always in the church yes regardless of the imperfections God is always in the church when you go to church look for God don't look for doctrines when you go to church look for God don't look for dress code when you go to church look for God not a man's ability to speak good English or otherwise not a man's ability to gather degrees and then you use that to mean oh this guy knows what he's saying no when you go to church don't go around looking for mundane things go to church looking for the one who is in the middle of the lampstands bypass the mistakes bypass the arrogance bypass the flesh and find God if you search for him you will find him in every church because he's there for the sake of two or three who are gathered in his name the rest may be gathered in another name but when two or three are gathered in his name what did he say will happen he said there I am not by proxy in their midst number two God is the builder of the church and by extension the builder of your life always know that number three separate between your personalized dealings with God and the doctrines that God commits unto you your personal dealings with God may require you following some strict pathways that are for your personal consumption and not for the church not for members generally separate it feed the people with the truth as committed to you unto them and separate between your personal dealings and what God is telling them number four separate between thus saith the Lord and your human opinions your human opinion can be spiritual and it can also be equivalent to the Word of God but have the unashamedness to admit before people especially those who honor you and esteem you to be so anointed have the meekness to tell them this is my perspective on this issue and when God speaks have the unreserved boldness to say this was from God if I perish let me perish please rise up on your feet hallelujah we are going to pray I'd like you to please participate in the prayer I thought I'll have time to round off with Psalm 133 a mystery God showed me about the blessing released when the corporate body comes but our time is up but I think we've had enough listen to me Jesus said look up everybody and ye shall know the truth he says and the truth shall make you free says therefore if the son of man sets you free you are free indeed 
Many of us have been saved, but we are not free. Because of these things. And we are in our way contributing to destroying the body of Christ. With these points that I've shared. Pride. Claiming everything that is done is from you. Or criticizing ministries. You call a ministry and say, this ministry, they are not anointed. They don't even have rema. There's no revelation in this ministry. There are books God wants you to read. And you feel I've left this man far. Papa Ia Deboe comes for a crusade. And you cannot attend. Because you think my level of revelation is far exceeding this thing. This man is going to be teaching us as if we are in nursery school. When you search for God, you will find him in every church. Take my word for it. When you search for God, the God that I serve, he's not just in your church. He's not just in Koinonia. When you search for him, you will find him. He was found in prisons. He was found in different places in the Bible. I choose to seek God, not the perfection of men. I choose to seek God, not the dexterity of ministries. I choose to seek God. When I go for a, me a meeting, I ignore the mistakes of the man of God. I ignore the limitations. I see his disalignments here and there, but I sustain a spirit of maturity. Did you know, brothers and sisters, and I say this with all humility, we are praying. I've had the privilege to be called by different people and they have spoken to me about men of God and their limitations. I think I was sharing with you, was it some weeks ago? One of them was one very great man of God and you know some people called me to say certain things that I cannot even begin to say here and they were true, they were not a lie. So when they said all these things to me, I had started seeing these signs personally but then when it, it it personally broke me the lady had to do it in secrecy because this is i mean if you count the men of god in this country maybe the first 10 he will, will be among them repeatedly but i told them something i said listen i'm not justifying the things the man of god is doing but I can tell you authoritatively, he's still a man of God. Whether you choose to disbelieve him or not, I will build my church. If he refuses to align in the secret place and amend for those imperfections, he has God alone to face. But as far as the building of the church is concerned, Christ alone must be glorified. Do not let the imperfections of churches and men of God stop you from seeing God and receiving there are men of God who are very arrogant but I listen to them passionately because my focus is not their arrogance they should finish their boasting and then let me hear what God has to say and I know they carry something that I need so I ignore all of those things there are men of God who are very careless I ignore their carelessness and I pay attention there are men of God who are very vulnerable when you look at them, you don't know what they can do. But I ignore those things and I pay attention. There are men of God who you know are standing very fine between the bridge of witchcraft and ministry. I ignore all of those things. I have had a passion to find God. That's why I find him everywhere. It doesn't matter where I look. I find him. You stop seeking for him and started seeking for perfection. In a man of God, in koinonia, in your ministry. You, search, you stop searching for him and you started seeking for perfection in every book. You started seeking for which Greek word is correct or wrong. And it stops blessing you. Oh, 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 you are amazing. Dear Lord. 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 You are amazing. Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. I'd like you to pray.
and say lord help me that everywhere i go in the body of christ let me search for jesus not perfection lift your voice and pray a seeker of jesus not perfection a seeker of jesus man may be imperfect men may not have the excellence you are looking for they may not have the organization you are looking for but can you find jesus in your church can you find jesus in your pastor can you find jesus in the church in zaria can you find jesus in the church in the north can you find jesus in the church in nigeria yes i know there are manipulations yes i know there are wrong prophecies i know that there are manifestations here and there of witchcraft i know there are people whose god is their belly but can you find jesus in the church lift your voice and pray lord i take away that attitude of cynicism i take away that attitude of resentment i take away that attitude of self-centeredness i search for jesus in every church i search for jesus in the catholic church i search for jesus in mfm in living faith in deeper life i search for jesus hallelujah prayer point number two lord i relinquish dependence on the flesh and all the things that you have accomplished through me i lift my eyes from today on you alone and i will never lean on my own understanding lift your voice and pray father i repent for making men look at me instead of you i repent for drawing the attention of men to myself instead of you are we praying pray lord i've not used my beauty to direct men to the king i've not used my prosperity to direct men to the king i have a passion for being celebrated to a default to a point where i don't care if my king is exalted or not lift your voice and pray let pride die in my life let fame glory die in my life hallelujah hallelujah we'll combine the third and fourth point and pray together we're going to pray and say lord i pray that all those who believe in your word upon my mouth will not be misled by my inability to separate between what you are saying and what i'm suggesting to them lift your voice and pray lord in any way i've confused people bring direction to them are we praying in koinonia lord i pray for the millions that submit to the grace of god upon my life and believe in the word of god upon my mouth may i never mislead them as a result of my ego oh may i not say god is saying when you are not speaking may i have the humility to separate between my personal suggestions and the word of the lord i receive grace not to put men in bondage i receive grace not to yoke men i receive grace to separate my personal feelings from that which you want to tell the body Hallelujah. 
hallelujah the last prayer point we are going to pray sorry there is no time one of the blessings of the body of Christ is the ability to contact the corporate anointing listen let me tell you something it's called the power of a corporate life let me just share this mystery give me one minute listen if there is a dimension that I need to step into a new level of prosperity or grace but because of my personal dealings with God I have not yet learned how to align the Holy Spirit so that I can make that possibility at work in life I can take advantage of a Jimmy's deadness and enter that dimension are we together now? the reason why when one person opens it to the body everybody starts entering it's called power of a corporate life it's there the oil comes the head of Aaron but does not stop there any boat connected to that spiritual tribe that family they become partakers of that grace so all it takes the, that's the beauty everybody does not have to open every door by themselves so you cut the door you have opened from your secret place I come the door I've opened from my secret place in worship there is a meaning I leave that meeting with a grave I never would have anything some of you by watching the worship team something was calling your music ministry you had the grace but you didn't have the ability to write songs but now somebody the grace to write songs started singing and that spirit fell upon you right now there are people who were not songwriters but because they were able to tap into the grace are we together now there are people that revelation and that grace the spirit of prayer and supplication but were able to when you keep for colonia and then you started attending the meetings and then you went to the prayer but something happened to you you contacted the spirit of prayer application now you can run eight hours you're stretching in the spirit seven hours and it's like you just detaching it there is a grace that makes it happen are we together you can begin to from in the night and pray till 12 in the afternoon and it does not tell because the power of the corporate anointing has come up there are people who do not have the appetite for excellence. They do not even have the recognition of it. But once you come to a mystery, all of a sudden, as a pastor, you start noticing. And in Koinonia, nobody said, it's now time for offering. And then people clap. And you say, wow, there can be a way. You are not just seeing. There is a spirit behind it. And that spirit comes upon you. And all of a sudden, you find out that it begins to affect the area of your life. The day you organize a meeting, you will see yourself reproducing Koinonia that's that you will know how much you have carried the grace there are some of you here you are music ministers the day you go to minister somewhere you will be shocked you will think you are in koinonia all of a sudden you will see graces that's what happened to a lot of pastors some of them just visited they just came and sat down i didn't even prophesy to them they just got up and went back to their meetings and they were surprised listen let me tell you the shocking thing when they went to their when they came for koinonia their keyboard did not follow them are we together their leaders did not follow them but because of the anointing they came with all their leaders started behaving the way the leaders behave in that ministry is an anointing it's called the power of a corporate life you enter into realms that your personal alignment would not have afforded you to enter on the strength of unity i like us to pray tonight as i just pray for us quickly i like you to say lord every grace that i need but my personal alignment has not been able to bring me into and it's available in this house i open up my spirit to receive it lift your voice and pray 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 you're a prayer warrior but you are poor it means there is a grace there is a grace that is yet to come upon your life you are anointed but there are no members there is a grace that you need you are prosperous but you don't pray there is a grace that you need you are anointed but there's no speed in your life oh pray come on what grace is lacking in my life and it's available what grace is lacking in my life pray we are rounding up Hallelujah. 
hallelujah i'll just leave the impartation for next week please don't miss next week's meeting before i come up we're going to have a session like a panel four people we're going to be discussing very serious matters of the kingdom a panel four people having some deep questions about our work with the spirit dimensions we'll touch on four areas spiritual growth finances family life and leadership we're going to touch on these four areas please don't miss it hallelujah we're going to sit down and have people discuss epochal dimensions this is not teaching this is not teaching we're going to give people an opportunity for god to just correct things and after that our minister if i'm to do an impartation now our time will go however please i want you to pray and say father whatever is not working in my life but i have seen another person in koinonia working in it that grace i open up that it must come upon my life right now please pray there are prayer warriors in this place there are millionaires in this place there are exceptional leaders in this place there are men and women of uncommon influence hear me brothers and sisters there is a variety of spiritual graces from different ministries different encounters different perspectives different spiritual paradigms it takes all it takes openness so the assignment for you is in preparation for friday write down listen write down all the areas of your life where you have seen the grace of god work take note of it but write down the areas of your life listen please write down the areas of your life where you have not seen the notable grace of god working come with that list we are going to pray on it on friday i'm not interested in the one that is working are we together that's why you think certain men of god are fake because they are the only ones carrying certain levels of graces and it's not supposed to be if you are a prayer warrior and you are broke it's because there is a grace you have not received are we together if you are a business person who does not pray there is a grace you have ignored so the body of christ gives us an opportunity to step into anointings brothers and sisters you will never prosper in an area where the grace is not available it's not the issue of trying please write it down oh in my finances i'm a millionaire this is already done in my prayer life god is helping me i'm doing very well but in my word life uh -uh, i think there's a problem in the area of character i think something is wrong or i i do well but everything i do does not work i try to call people into anything and they don't come there is a grace for influence that you don't have write it down with your heart open we are going to flog it out here on friday open the heavens and let there be transference of graces transference and you will go out there were things in my life years ago were not in my life i know they were not in my life and i knew the day they came there are things right now they are not yet in my life and i'm pursuing them with every every openness of heart and spirit and i know they will come and they will land in my life father i pray tonight you have challenged us over the body of christ to the end that we come to the unity of faith i'm praying for everyone under the sound of my voice lord bring them to strange levels of graces in the name of jesus christ you are doing mighty things in koinonia in this season and lord i thank you for it i'm praying oh god that you will not withhold your hand do mighty things mighty things mighty things in the lives of your people in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ now please keep standing there are people here please when i'm making the altar call i want to play with us no movement let us always honor those who need to come and give their lives to christ hallelujah and so time for altar call we should have minimal distractions so that we give the people an opportunity to be born again to be saved 
listen the foundation of all these things we are talking about if you are not in Christ you are not part of the body of Christ are we together every part of the body has a similarity when you see a growth look not as part of the body the doctors remove it are we together now if you are of Christ then you must carry his DNA scattered in here inside and outside there are people listen who are yet to give their lives to Christ you have never made a decision or perhaps there are people you have been coming out for altar call everywhere you go but you don't understand fully what you are doing or there are people who have given their lives to Christ but for some reason honestly sincerely before God the cares of this life the pressures of this life have pushed you to a point where you know that you need to come back to your first love these three categories of people please very quickly we have two minutes to receive you wherever you are inside and outside the Lord is speaking to you leave your seat and come right to the front God bless you God bless you appreciate them as they come I believe there are people the Lord is speaking to don't wait for anybody to come you are the first person wherever you are make sure you don't sit back if God is talking to you there are people outside God bless you keep coming please don't sit back I believe there are more people God is speaking to them he's saying you need to come to the cross don't play games with your destiny no one will force you but then you are opening up yourself to a life of victory a life of grace two minutes please make your way to the front if there are people coming from outside make way for them hallelujah quickly quickly we have one more minute are there more people coming god bless you god bless you quickly if you're coming please hurry up let's stretch our hands towards them and pray for them if there's anyone joining them you, you join quickly as we pray look at me all of you in front please look at me I'm going to lead you into this prayer God bless you my brother look at me please gentlemen can you look at me just in one minute I want to pray for you my darling lady wants to join come and join my dear don't feel bad thank you for making this decision this is a decision unto the Lord God bless you sir thank you so much sir thank you so much hallelujah lift your right hand and say after me from the depth of your heart dear Lord Jesus I love you with all my heart and I believe you died for me you shed your blood for my sin I ask you to come into my heart be my Lord be my Savior from today the power of sin is broken over my life I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus I receive the power to live a victorious life in the name of Jesus let me pray for you father I stretch my hands over your people I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that this decision will mark a new season in their lives in the name of Jesus Christ every weight every weight of the flesh and everything that destroys your passion for God we arrest right now in the name of Jesus let this begin a journey that will never end in the name of Jesus thank you so much for this great decision I'd like you to please rise and follow the gentleman waving his hands they welcome you more warmly on our behalf then they'll have details bless you hallelujah dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God our man of God Apostle Joshua Salmon and that is I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye